Welcome to Free Cheese episode 287. I'm your Joe Dix, joined by Mark Augustiniak. What's up? Matt Selner. Hello. The Free Cheese is a weekly video game podcast about video games brought to you once a week by thefreecheese.com. What? Go on. Pitchers and catchers nah, report uh, uh, uh. on Tuesday. Uh, 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 uh. Spring is around the corner. Nah, uh, uh, uh. That's something to be excited about. Go on. <laughs> what? Two bad things happened this week, kind of. Go on. I have a bad thing. So, viewer, my cousin, viewer, listener, whatever, <laughs> video podcast, all the same, right? Got me a fucking amiibo. Hell yeah. For my birthday. Happy birthday. Mm. It's still in the packaging, because guess what? I don't know what to do with it. It's useless. Just leave it in the packaging as a collector's item. Ugh. It was very thoughtful. I put it behind. Uh, my... It was very thoughtful. That card was dope too. Yeah, yeah that was a good card. Penguins too. That double dig. I get it. No, it's not a double dig. Penguins actually are my favorite animal. I thought you hate penguins because the... I hate the Pittsburgh Penguins and I hate the city uh... of Pittsburgh, but not the actual penguin itself. You ever been there? No, I heard it's a, a city of bridges though. And Michael looks... Keaton's from there. How could it be bad? City of love, brotherly love. Isn't that Philadelphia? Nope. Keaton. Are you sh- Keaton. Is this... Are you sure? Keaton. Go on. I'm waiting for the other part. Oh, what? The fucking free trial? Not that part. I don't Bef- know the other. The, the thing that led to that, that I said, that you said, fuck you. What? I don't remember. I honestly don't remember. The thing that led to that. The thing that I was completely right about. Oh, the Nintendo Direct? <laughs> yes, the Nintendo Direct. That you predict every week? And it came true. Oh, finally, you're one and for fucking six. And it came true. We're going to have a lower batting average than, like, half of the Orioles players this year, and they're all going to be bad. Get, here, give me, a, give me a roster. I'll tell you who's going to be good and who's going to be bad, because apparently I can predict the future. I, I can will things into existence. I honestly can't even produce a roster for you because it's so – we're going to be so bad, I don't even know the players yet. Is it bad? Oh, it's going to be real bad. Mm. But, uh, Mr. Macchiato. He's gone. Well, we don't know I where know, yet. but he may come back, right? No. He said he's an open agent. He's a free boy. Mm, yeah. No. Mm-hmm. He's, he's gone. San Diego, Chicago, New York, I think. Yeah, the Chargers. Who's San Diego's baseball team? Padres. Hmm. That's a nice pirate, stadium. Right? You been? No, just like I can just tell just from whenever I see MLB it. the show. I get it. Yeah. yeah. I get it. Mark? Mm-hmm. Sup? Oh, you know. Did you have a good week? Yeah, it was pretty good. Did you watch Doom Patrol? I did not. Oh. Uh... I did watch Umbrella Academy. I watched the first ep, and then... It's not bad. No, I'm just waiting on it to get there. And also, as I was watching it, I was remembering the book a little bit. You know what I mean? I was like, wait, what's the I big I barely twist? remember the book. So... It was good. All, this is all like a... I like... I kind of like not knowing. I do too, but like I couldn't remember around. until the end of the first episode. And then I was like, oh, right. And then... But it's... Yeah, mm-hmm. hmm. I like it though. It's shop... Well, it's pretty... To look yeah. at. And like Gerard has his hands in it. Yeah. So. Literally, you can see them? Yeah. They're, mm. they're, they're, it's kind of like a hidden Mickey. Oh. It's kind of those. Yeah. One of, like one of the aliens in the background of South Park. I get it. Yeah. Yeah, I like it, man. So far. Also went to Katsukon for a day. Oh, that picture was actually from there. Yeah. Oh. That was a. You've been there before, right? Or I you have, were, yeah. but I never attended panels before. For the ignorant, including myself, what is that? It's just a big anime convention. All right. I was just there for a day just to catch some sights. Um, Where was it at? At the convention center? It was up at the Gaylord where MAGFest is. Oh, okay. That. The one by D.C.? Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. National Harbor. Um, did get a keychain. I saw that. So, no surprise. Oh, <laughs> It is an Isabel keychain. Even has a little bell. Oh my god! But on the back, see, right now she's happy. Why is she topless? Little, little <laughs> well, you know, I was about to say she's normal. fully clothed, but I wanted to keep the illusion real. <laughs> but the cool thing is the backside. Oh no! <laughs> oh, it's a different image. <laughs> oh, it sure is. <laughs> Listeners, we'll let you fill in the blanks with your imagination. Uh, she's just panicking. Uh huh. She's she- not. Mm-hmm. 
This is a PG keychain. <laughs> okay. Don't you dare. Oh, Don't yeah. you dare make this loot. Sure. This is not a loot cast. You're going to have to tweet out a picture of it to, for, to prove your innocence here. This isn't a rod cast. This is a podcast. <laughs> oh, <Okay>. God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for the record, I guess I should throw out that the amiibo I got was Samus. Oh, yeah. Samus is. So I used in Smash. You mean? Yep. S- Samus. And that's who I started playing uh, Smash with. was my cousin back in the day. So. Right, right. Full circle. Mm-hmm. What's your next amiibo? None. Okay, what's the next amiibo Mark and I are going to buy you? Zero Suit Samus. Oh, you know what? He's got a point. And then Dark Samus. Oh, did they put that out yet? Not yet. Okay. Dark Samus. Ridley. Ridley. Oh, also, you've been playing Incineroar, so you probably should get the Incineroar one. He's thinking hard. No, or maybe it. just like an Incineroar fursuit. What? Uh, yeah, let's just hot, let's no. take it beyond. All right, I'm down. No. I think it's good. Also, you're pretty fond of Nest these days, and once Mother Three comes out, I mean, might as well just not go. Not a real game. I, mm. So that's something you've been predicting every week. I'm Can almost we right. about that. I'm almost right. <laughs> now you've been wrong for as long as I've known you. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> One day I'll be right though. But it happened, then all of it'll be worth it. That's the thing, you know. Just gotta think about that. That's it. What panels did you see at Katsukon? Uh, I just kind of went with what, what other people were doing. I didn't really have a preference. I was like, whatever, just go wherever. I'm just, I'm just here to just to people watch at this. No, point. but you implied like, oh, I've been, but I've never been to a panel before. You made it yeah, seem like there was something. No. I mean, it wasn't. Did they do a hand check? <sighs> oh God, hand check. Oh yeah, they used to do that at Otakon. For what? I mean, gotta check the hands, make sure they're not okay. Well, I, well funny thing Mm -hmm, is that mm -hmm. when i looked at the schedule after the fact i I mean i left before any of this but Mm -hmm. from like 11 p.m until like 2 a.m all the panels are nothing but like hentai related Mm -hmm. god damn it hand check we're like we're like you could even apparently like dub over it hand check just for funsies Mm. i don't know i don't know what their ideas are like Like a talk shows on mute kind of thing where you're all like i have no idea Mm -hmm. i I left at like 9 30 or whatever (sighs) Because it was still like an hour drive back. I just wasn't. Would have been worth it. I, I was done with the day. Was that yesterday? Yeah. Nice. Um, Ugh. No, but this panel was apparently called the Masquerade. Which it Stop isn't. Stop looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not what you think. It's not like a, it's not like a, a dance or a ball or whatever. Um, it's just people who, who are cosplayers showing off their costumes and may do a little performance or a skit of some kind. And no, that's what I thought. And they have different classes, beginner, intermediate, advanced. And there's people judging, but we didn't stick around for the whole thing. But Any good cosplay? Some of it. Anyone dress up as Isabel? Uh, not during that. Sonic Fox. But yeah. I have seen Isabel cosplay there. I don't, I don't know I don't if know. I want to know. Oh, was, my God. It was, it was all right. Tasteful? Was it more tasteful than your Mitomo room? No, nothing beats that. <laughs> nothing, nothing beats that. Nothing. Man. I'm like her little Helga Pataki. We're yeah. done, right? I'm so uncomfortable <laughs> over here. Are we done? No. Now it's the Amiibo. Now Hentai. No, now just Isabel. That's cosplay. it. You can't have a you can't have a free cheese podcast without talk about Isabel cosplay and Hentai. Also, fuck soup. And Jim Ryan. We have a new uh, no, combatant no. in the soup wars. <laughs> we do. <laughs> so Matt and I are playing Destiny this week. Surprise. And we're looking at Matt's like, did someone join our clan? Because our clan tag, you told us to make it soup. There was oh, some, did I? Yeah, jokingly. We were playing and you were oh. like, can we change it to soup? And I changed it to soup. I didn't know you changed it. Yeah. yeah, soup. And then we're playing and there's a fucking dude and his clan tag was soup. Huh. It's pretty good. It was like the Panera... Yeah, they Vanguard were the, the Panera, like... Panera Warriors. <laughs> they were some dumbass name, but their tag was soup. It's pretty good. Oh, man. I went to my mom's today and leaving the house, driving, and you see someone walking up the road up near that shitty hotel. You know what I mean? Ah, the good yeah. one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, just one of those. You know what I mean? You're like, just some fucking bum, whatever. Way better than I ever could have thought. Because he's walking up the street, smoking a cigarette, and uh, pantomiming and talking. So it's like, oh, God. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but then I look closer. I'm like, what the fuck is that? Does he have, like, a weird... That's And Katie goes, is that a bird? 
Dude's just walk up the street, blasting cigs, rapping, or or or, or now I, I realize talking to his bird. He had an exotic bird perched on his fucking shoulder. Oh, I thought she was going for like a whole dumb Superman thing. No, no. we're talking legit, legit a bird, bird, yellow, green. Like it was talking, he was talking, walking up the street while he blazed cigs. Yeah, pirate. <laughs> yeah, it was, was it fake? No, it was it moving. Was it was animated. <laughs> yeah, real life, real life bird. Oh, not your, not your average street bird. An exotic pet bird. That oh, wasn't a trash bird, like no. a crow. Mm mm. It's not the street bird where if you give it a like a bad look, he's like, "What the yeah. fuck are you looking at?" <laughs> he just doesn't try to peck your shit. Yeah, no, no, no. It was a, a, a real bird. Not gonna fly yeah. away on you. Wings are clipped. It was nuts. He's I, also high 24-7, so he can't fly even if he wanted to. Yeah, right. exactly. He's just chilling. Can't do much. Second hand or primary hand? Huh? The bird. Is he high because of the dude smoking, or is he smoking himself? I think he determined. has his own little... Or is it smoking? Just a little spliff kind of yeah. tucked in his beak. Mm. Yeah, I get it. Or maybe Polly wants a molly. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, whatever he's into. Got it. <laughs> um, did you guys play any video games this week? fuck is that oh i don't even know a little bit yeah what'd you what'd you get into um i guess jumping on the on the on the direct train here lightly i guess we'll talk more about it later or should we do all direct stuff right now just now later no i was just they they announced some they they released some demos and stuff related to the direct and i tried uh tell you what did announce the the mother three dumb bitch well, they're saving for E3. <laughs> it's coming. Keep predicting it. Give it time. You know what? I'm going to predict PS5 announcement every week until I'm right, too. So, And one day you'll be right, and then you'll get it. Fucking stupid. Did you try Damon X Machina? I sure did. Or Demo X Machina? Were you trying to? Because it's a demo. It's, like a, okay. it's a prototype version. Right. Yeah. I did. What'd you think? Okay. So... Overall, I like it. Same. Um, I like obviously it's a demo, but I'm sure it's not too far from the final product. Um, I do like its setup. A lot of it reminisces with Fantasy Star with me, hmm. um, with like customization of your character, how it's like kind of limited, but you also have those weirdly like, specific choices you can make. Yeah, um, I like I like I like those games where you can just have any hairstyle. It's it's not you know separated they just right. like yeah, yeah 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 right where it's like oh, here's like female like, well is that yeah, story related uh decisions or is that just character no design character decisions? like literally okay. when right. you start the thing it's like yeah. what do you want to look like All right. mm. whatever and, and i think and you can pick voice samples too i think uh i didn't see voice samples or maybe i'm imagining that there but there was like a um i like the color specifically yeah. so with color like they've got presets for Everything for skin tone, for hair color, eye color, your suit, your armor, whatever. But the presets are options that, you know, they think or, or whatever. Like, hey, these are some typical mm-hmm. skin tones. And they've got all, the whole spectrum. But then also they just have a full rainbow color selector. And you can go whatever, with any of the things. You can go yeah, with whatever Because Fantasy Star only had a, like, a RGB meter. Which I'm fine with. That's that kind of cool too. Yeah. Yeah, and it had numbers, so you know what numbers yeah. to go yeah, to. Yeah. Um, I like that Type you can in invert code. all the hairstyles. Me too, because I liked one of them, but I wanted the bangs on the other side. The way I part my hair. Come on. Did you do like the long? Yeah, I did that too. I think I changed it though, because mm. I yeah yeah yeah. I changed you can it change it whenever. I did. Yeah yeah yeah. I changed it to a different. Yeah. So like that was another cool thing that like, you're not stuck with it. Um, I like that you can change each eye. Right. Yeah. If you wanted to. So I put like a scar over one eye and then made it all white and just kept the other one like blue or whatever. So if something villain. happened and then the mech customization is really neat. You can either do the full body change to the, well, I'm just talking aesthetics, like color wise yeah, yeah. you can change, but also you can change all the different parts of your mech too. As you play through the mission, you get the different, mm-hmm. like here's an arm piece, here's a whatever. And then there's like decals you can put on or patterns. Um, but like I have the mech pretty much looking like the guy's suit. So like to match the pilot's outfit, so it's mostly white with red accents. Yeah, and I'm, then I made just the left arm all black. Yeah, I made a because I made a story in my head of like it got damaged and that, that that's like a scrap. That's see, all he has left. So that's his shield arm. We're right there. I went with the whole Green Lantern thing. So these things you're picking <laughs> up, they're 
just cosmetic. They're not don't have any stats. No, they do have stats. Okay, right. yeah, yeah, for yeah. your um, it's both for your mech. So the structure of the game, you like, just kind of a hub. Yeah, you go to a computer, you pick a mission, and you go and. And the missions are all said mission. the ones I did. I did three of them, I think. They're all pretty much the same. It's fly in, shoot enimies, stay alive. Yeah. Did sometimes it's like attacking. Sometimes you're defending something. Yeah. And then there is kind of a story during it, like you're, kind of like Star Fox style, where like characters will, will start yeah. talking in dialogue, and I'll kind of change the scenario of things. Did you get that weird one that was like a whole diatribe about physical media? I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They just did not know what the what the fuck it was. You had to protect a library <laughs> from falling, and the like computer that's issuing all the missions is like, th- there's like the fucking uh, graffiti artist, and he's mm. like, "What's a library?" And then it's like a library is blah, 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 and went to this whole thing, and then it was just the one guy was like, "I get all my media digital," and it was like, "But I like having a physical." It was so weird. It was like having a conversation on this fucking podcast. Played yeah. out in Star Fox Tech, but I liked it. I liked the weird. It's all fully voiced too. Yeah. Um, did you ever die? Yes, I died fighting the boss. Yeah, same. Because I think I'm just not ready for that. No. So I don't know if you're supposed to win, but it's cool that once your mech blows up, you the game's not over. I know. As soon as it happened, I was like, ah, oh, fuck me. No, you nope. you're you're on foot, and you have like a little like near style little robot shooting shit. Oh. I get so many near vibes from this game. Um, I think they have somebody who worked on that in this. Hmm. That would make sense. I don't Are know. Are they named Yoko Taro? No. Oh, man. Oh, damn. Well, it's not the same. <laughs> Could be wrong, though. One man it's, it's a lot of collaborations. It's... Like, the, the composers, are they do Soul Calibur and Tekken games. Yeah. And other stuff. Like, this is their first project really since mm-hmm. then from doing that stuff. It just had that. There's something about this that's, um, that speaks to the near. I think one of the writers uh, writes for uh, Evangelion or whatever. Oh, yeah. That makes sense. So, it's just a lot of just. Collaboration All star cast board. with making this game. Um, What's the mission structure like? So you said you play three missions. Is it just like linear? Is it like one after the other, or is there some kind of hub or it's menu? a hub? Like you yeah, do it's the hub mission. mission done. Yep, get right. rewards back. But whenever you fight other mechs, um, you can choose what part you want to take from them, and you mm. add that to your collection. Okay, you can only take one of their parts when you're scrapping, and it cho- and it shows you their stats and everything. It's like all right, yeah. So, so it's you like, know, I'll take like, a headpiece or I'll take a weapon, right? And I think you can use it right there too. And then you said about not being or not being uh, d- developed, that yeah, not being geared up for a boss. So like you can replay these missions and I gain... believe so. Yeah, okay, endlessly. Right. Got it. There's also go. a skill tree. I don't know if you mess with this. Uh, did I? There's a skill tree for your pilot. Yes, I did. I did. I did. I leveled up like my head or something. And, and which it's made like, my eyes glow weird. It's, seriously, yeah. It, it's it's a branch to where you can't once you pick a side, you can't go back. I mean, you can you can, you you can, can re-roll right for for twenty thousand credits. Yeah, you can reset it all. But once you usually yeah yeah with yeah, that yeah, thing, yeah. like you can't like if if it, if it splits in two, you can't pick both. Like mm. Borderlands, for example, how you can like pick each tree and just level up wherever you want to level up. You're not locked into a certain thing. This one kind of locks you into a path. And um yeah, and then as you do that, your character actually gets cybernetic enhancements. So like I have like now my arms are just robotic arms now and glowing eyes. That's cool. Because like at something with like locking on and yeah 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 um like better attack or something it's, it's like I didn't expect that I thought that was pretty cool. There's a um, lot to this game. Like it's not soundtrack is amazing. Soundtrack's really fucking good. Like you sent it to me and I was just listening to it. It's like Doom 2016 almost. It, it's that with something else mixed with like industrial techno shit. Yeah 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 yeah. It's good. Really good soundtrack. Yeah, I like it. I'm, I want to play through more of it, and because they requested in the um, direct, like send feedback on social media. Okay. Um, and the games, and I forgot the game's fully co-op. Is it? Oh man, it's cool. I yeah. I like it a lot. I don't. Did they have a release date on it? I don't remember. I think it was summer. I think. I th- Sorry. I, I thought for some reason it was like July or August. It, I think originally it was, and then I feel like they announced during this uh, something less specific. The only I, thing that I kind of wish they would advance a little more on is the melee weapon stuff. Yeah, so I like, got a sword, but I haven't used it so, yet. Did you pick up shit in the world? That was cool. I picked up a stop uh, sign and threw it at somebody. Yeah, yeah, that's Maybe. cool. Like if you pick up like one of those like uh, tanks or whatever. I don't know what it's like a big canister. Yeah. And just chuck it and like 
it like drops health and stuff. You can pick that up. Um, no, but when you have a sword, it just says summer. You just like when you because it, it auto targets enemies, and when you, you do a melee, it, it like it just magnets you right to them, zips right to them, and you do a slash. And it's really strong, but that's it. There's no like there's no big combo chain you can do. Yeah, and I guess that was just a platinum side of me wanting that, but I'm okay with it how it is. Like I had a gun that auto fired. Just as soon as it locks onto an enemy, it was just shooting bullets. You didn't have to pull the trigger? Nope. I would just fly around and it would just shoot for me. I do like the targeting system because it's a a thing where you move your reticle and it's really chaotic as you're playing. Like, because there's just a lot happening. Like, in your movement, you're you're kind of free moving in all three directions. You know what I mean? Hmm. And I, at first, it's disorienting because you're like, man, I'm never going to be able to, like, specifically target that guy. Like, the tutorial's not that bad either. No, I... It was pretty simple. Yeah, it didn't go too far in the hand holy stuff. But but I like, like, all you have to do is just move your reticle. There's a, a reticle, but then there's a bigger circle around it. You just need that bigger circle to have your enemy somewhere in there, and then it'll... Yeah, like like, like like a cube pops up on the enemy, and that, that's telling you that you're locked onto them. Yeah. White means you're locked on, red means that you're hitting them, yes. I think, or something like that. Yeah, that... Because that... you have, like, a shoulder mount with all these missiles come out, and they all just, like, heat seek onto that cube yeah. that you're looking at or whatever you can change all the missiles them. i think to something else is that one of the swappable parts you can swap so like your wings can hold extra weapons and you can swap between all that or like or like what if was a, the what's the swap button because i couldn't get that it's to the work. d-pad oh fuck me all right got it yeah it's weird because yeah. like because the d-pad they put it away and then you have to hit like a shoulder button from i don't like like you have to you have to tap it twice because a little thing pops up and it's like all oh, right, you want this sense. and then double tap this side I'm like got okay it. i don't use it often because i always forget to but if you run out of ammo or something, you can just yeah you can do that. But yeah, it's it's really neat. Like it's not um. I mean, it's definitely not the most. I don't I don't want to say I don't want to say that. Uh, I was about to say it's not the most polished, but I mean it's a demo. You got time. Yeah. Um. It feels pretty good though. I I, I think I think for for its limitations, yeah, it does a pretty good job. What would you want to see more of? Hmm. I'm not even sure. When you say limitations, like what do you like visually, graphically? Oh, okay, yeah, stuff like that. Uh, yeah. Um, like it's it's like you have pretty big maps. Um, the mobility is really good. Like you can just like you can just hover, dash around on the ground if you want the whole time, or fly the whole time. Like yeah. there's no cooldown or anything, unless you're using like the extra thrust to like move somewhere. Yeah. Um, I don't know why people were saying it's bad, like. I don't know. Immediately after the director, maybe like the next morning, I saw uh, people on Twitter just like, Ugh. and I was like, oh, really? Because I hadn't tried it yet. And I was like, I'm still going to try it, but yeah, I, think, I don't, I didn't think it was bad. I, I, I think just because of me with, and much of my past with Fantasy Star Online, I, I think I just drew a lot of similarities from that. And that's what I'm liking about it. Like, yeah. it, like this, this is kind of replacing that for me. Yeah. And I'm okay with that. Um, I think the only thing I would, like, if I was to be nitpicky, I would just probably want near like combat. Just a little bit more like fluidity to it. Yeah, even with the dodging and everything. Like the dodging is yeah. good, but just just something about it. I guess I guess because you're in a mech. Yeah. But because when you're on foot, it does feel a little different. Give them that feedback, dude. Yeah. Like they're. I just, I just for have it. to find a way to really convey what I want. I gotta pick my words. Write up a draft. Email it to me. I'll come through it. Give you some notes. Mark yeah. it up in red, and then you can. And the frame rate's not that bad either. It's like it, feel, it feels like it's around like forty. 45? It, it felt smooth. I mean, I was, were you playing docked or handheld? I, I did both. First, I was doing handheld originally. Yeah. And then I just did docked. And I was like, it's not bad. Like, I haven't like, tried I, I don't care yet. that it's not 60 for this game. Like, I think for, because it's like kind of cell shaded. Yeah. Not really. Yeah. Like, it just, it has its own style. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I, I think it works for what it is. It's definitely one of those, like, it doesn't have to be the best game, but it's a pretty decent now, game. Now, was it a steady, like, 30 to 40, or was it, did it dip? I didn't notice any dips. All right. Yeah, I don't think it dipped. And hand It could be, because it could optimize it to, like, get higher. Yeah. yeah. It, I mean, cutscenes are pretty neat. Like, yeah. It was, I, it's, yeah, it's, it's very stylish. Good. Yeah. I'm, so. I'm good with it. It it had every, it could have, after that initial announcement of it last year, it could have easily been one of those weird-ass PS2 games that your friend rents and tells mm-hmm. you all about, but you never play it because it's boring as shit. It, just, it does a good job I don't of, think it is that. Like, it looks like it's a lot going on, but it's really not. And I love that it keeps it so simplified. Yeah. Like, for example, like, I know, like, I'm, I make a lot of comparisons to Fantasy Star with this, but 
for those who haven't played Phoenix Star Online, you're on this spaceship that's your hub. And, and then you get transported to planets, and you just basically dungeon crawl, beat a boss, come back. Mm-hmm. Or you can do specific missions. Um, but w- with with Fancy Star, you had to travel to different rooms, maybe on a different floor for certain things, and w- whatever. And like, and you ran super slow, so everything just took forever. This is just like a little garage area where your mech is, a little door on the side, and then in the center is a computer. That's it. It's just right there it's like yeah good i like that yeah everything's just in one spot everything is just convenient enough i think though i mean this is the demo so i yeah. think it was you know limited on what was in there but i think that hub world will get so much bigger there was even Probably. like this the center part i think it's like i can't remember now but there was a number one next to it hmm. yeah, i yeah, feel yeah, like yeah. they'll add different stations in that little hub world where you can do i feel like that'll be everything like if you want to be do... surprised if you have you just eventually you get different mechs so you can stop instead of customizing one you just have customize a couple yeah, yeah. for different situations it's really neat I'm, I'm looking forward to it tell me about yoshi's crafted world man that's a charming as fuck game yeah i love it now that's a that's a smooth game that's like a 60 uh docked if in certain parts it, no no no, i'm not disagreeing with that my qualm with it which you think about a demo and when a demo is cut together and i didn't finish and, the demo though so i don't know where it stops uh i will tell you but my problem with it was the visuals really only because they go for this cardboard cut out world and when you look too close you can see like that they're assets you know what i mean like it it broke it a little bit i love the way it looks but it was like a part where i'm looking and it's like oh that's kind of like a little jagged edge where i can tell that was something that was like i can tell the switch can't handle what they want it to really look like you know what i mean yeah i guess i mean i didn't really it didn't that was me like when i looked way too close and was too no i mean i mean i definitely noticed that too but i just didn't like focus on it i guess no once i was playing it was fine so the the playing it there's three different things you you can do in this demo there's the level where i'm sure you did that part where you start off and you're just you're yoshi and you're running from left to right like i just got the parts to the train okay yeah so you get the parts of the train you have to find all those throughout the world um after you do that and you ride the train you get to the end of the stage and it said there's three poochies that go running back to the left and it says do you want to go back for them or go back to the main menu and if you go back for them you go back through the back side of the stage yeah. so every stage has a front side and a back side so now you're on the back and like all the cardboards taped Man. together on the back and you can see all the scenes and everything. it's really cool you go through and you find all three poochies and you get to the other end of the world um to the other side back at the beginning and after that, you go back to the main menu, and there's a. I already forgot if it's a flower or whatever. There's something there. It could be a fucking can of Coke. Uh, whatever it is, it's there, and it says, uh, "Hey, I I could really use some cows. Could you go get me some cows? Five should do." So you go back into the level. You play it from left to right again, from the front side, and now you're looking because you learn the egg throwing mechanic partway mm-hmm. through the level. Um, now you play back through from the beginning of the stage, knowing the egg throwing mechanic that you can throw kind of uh, toward you or behind, like depth I, of field. I was I was doing it as soon as I started. I'm dumb, so I didn't. Um, but you can you can choose whether you go on on Yoshi's line of sight or if you're going forward or backward in the diorama. And this time, you go through and you get five cows. Once you get the five cows, it pops up and it says, "Do you want to keep playing or you want to end it here?" And I was like, "I'm I'm good. We can tap out." And you go back to the main menu and it's like, isn't that great? Look at all the stuff you can do. Here's a video of more. And then it plays a trailer and then it tells you to go to the eShop or quit. Mm. Yeah. E-shop or quit. It, yeah, but it like, said like, go yeah, to the like, main menu or, like, or yeah, like, to the, like Those cows, like, um, I was just hitting them from the start and I, was, and I just kept getting red coins for some of them. I wonder if you got all five from the start, if it would count it, or if you'd have to go back through. I don't know. Because I thought I was getting a good chunk of them, but I know I missed the one. Because I was just hitting everything yeah. just to interact with it. Yeah. And I I, mean, I don't know if you could do this in the original Yoshi's Island or Yoshi's Story, but I didn't know once you aim at something, you can just keep spamming the egg button. To do what? To just, instead of just throwing one egg at a time. Oh. I was, I was just like... Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I was lighting them up. 
I don't know if you can or you can't. I don't remember. Ooh. I just I, d- I discovered it with this demo. Of Yoshi's Island. That's so cool. if I'm late to that game, <laughs> whoops. But huh. I thought that was really neat. Yeah. So instead of just because I thought that's kind of annoying, just every time it's just <sighs> okay. Huh. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah. No, you just you just need to keep tapping it. Hmm. Um, what I liked about shooting in the distance though is I I like that Nintendo is kind of um, taking advantage of the like out of focus. Yeah, and like like you kind of noticed it with the Link's Awakening trailer, like mm-hmm. all in the distance, everything's just kind of out of focus, like kind of artsy style. So I see these trees that I can knock down, and they're out of focus. But once I hit it, that part is in focus, and it stays in focus. I'm like, that's a nice touch. That was nice, along with like the the subtle uh, HD rumble that goes off, like as you kind of like line up the reticle oh, or something. Yeah. You can hit. Like there's just little things in that where you know HD rumble is one of those things where it was like. Yeah, it's a gimmick and whatever, but, you know, what are they going to do with it down the line? It's like, this is a good, just those subtle little moments where you're like, you feel it, like, just as a, you don't have to think about it. There's the visual right. cue, but there's also that tactile feeling of it. You going to yeah. buy it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I definitely prefer uh, Doc, by the way, with the Pro Controller. Like, I played handheld originally, and, like, it's it's fine. It yeah. still works, but it's just something about, it feels more wholesome with bigger buttons. That was the one I only played Doc. I didn't play it handheld. Which, maybe that was my TV that I was noticing that shit on more. You know what I mean? No, or I mean, I, I don't know. I, I mean, I'm sure I, I saw it too. It just didn't, like yeah. I said, it just didn't really. It didn't, it was just like the beginning when I was like, wow, oh. You know what I mean? Like you're kind of taken aback because it's like, oh, wow, they really did this. I can't believe it. And mm-hmm. then like, oh, right. Oh, it's an Unreal Engine 4. That's right. I remember. It's pretty cool. Any other demos? No, that's pretty much it. Hmm. Any other games? So I didn't play the one. Uh, oh, I know. I checked. I know. I forgot about it. I downloaded it. Yeah. I just forgot about it. Oh, man. Um, but you played the other one. I did play a little more Apex. Yeah. Um, it's not bad. I actually didn't get mad at it. I'm not a competitive shooter guy usually, unless it's like a rare occasion or like like Halo or something. Yeah. Um. When you say rare occasion, you mean like a golden eye or like a perfect dark? I don't think I want to go back to those, no. No, I don't either. I'm <laughs> done with 10 frames a second. It's because rare made them. I get it. Okay. <laughs> uh, no, but like, it, yeah, like I, I, I did have fun with it. Um, It took me a bit to really understand like all the, you know, like equipping everything and seeing what ammo goes for what gun. Like it, it's actually very intuitive. Yeah. And I didn't realize it at first. They just didn't really need shit with accessibility for that game. Like, yeah. when your uh, teammate is firing, the little muzzle flare that pops up, there's the... Um, I saw an option, I didn't try it, but I think if you use their in-game chat rather than, like, an external party chat, it will transcribe what yeah. your teammates are saying. And it, what the fuck? That's so cool. Um, yeah, a little shit like that's really neat. Yeah, I, I like that the ammo is color-coded with the guns. I think that's a... Yeah, that's a very convenient mm-hmm. thing, yeah. especially if you just want to fly. You don't want to like, really think about stuff. Like, yeah, just oh, okay, yep, yeah, that's, that's the one I need. Yep. And then it'll even tell you if it's the wrong ammo because it'll put a little yeah circle slash thing. I started to get it a little bit. This, I mean, I to be honest, really only played this at the beginning of the week for obvious reasons, but I started to like really understand like what does my character do? What do the other characters do? Which yeah. which weapons do I like and which ones do I feel confident with? That kind of stuff. My brother fucking hated this game. Hated it. Like, because huh. he, you remember he, like, spent two months just playing PUBG. Right. Like, I think his in-game time is, like, over two weeks or something on PUBG. It's fucking stupid. So I was like, yo. That this game is... plays very differently, too. Yeah, yeah. But I was like, hey, this is this is the new one. And he was like, all right. I haven't really been playing anything, but I'll download it. He downloaded it. We did, like, two matches, maybe. three. He was like fuck and i was like you just i know just give it time but he was yeah the, the combat i'm still i still don't understand the whole thing like even when i have good equipment like i jumped on a ship and got level three shit mm-hmm. and oh, yet shit. and you survived it and you lived to see the day yeah good for you i don't think um, i've done that yet i mean we did, a, we did a one game I, think. I got nothing out of it i've never gotten a gun and survived the drop ship but still, like shooting other people, it feels like it takes forever. To it kill. takes a lot yeah. of bullets to like. To I, drop I've only someone. killed one person, maybe downed one or two out of all the times I played. Yeah. But yet they hit me, and I'm just like glass. Um, a lot of that thinks the helmet. 
Yeah, you got because people aim for the head, and if you have a shitty helmet. Well, the helmet is the um, is the dampener. So like, say like a weapon takes out twenty five or it takes twenty five health. Like uh, a helmet is a dampener where it will only change it to like eighteen per per bullet or something like that. Yeah, I think that's a big part of it. Because it was me, uh, my friend Tasha, and uh, Joy Burley. We were mm-hmm. all playing. And we so we mostly we mostly made it to the to the like the end of the round just by surviving just kind of hiding bathroom style, and we were like it was two squads left between me us and another squad yeah. and then we saw that they were on top of the skulls of Skull Town, coming down on us, mm-hmm. and that was a close fight that was probably our best one. And Did you win? Uh, no. Ah. Um. But then after that, I was like, no, fuck it. Let's just be dangerous here. And we started like jumping on a ship. And then Joe got a glitch where he got stuck inside of the ship. Nice. Like, because he was reviving me. So his his character was, like, against a wall. But his legs were through the wall. And then when the animation, the script of your character stands up on that side and backs up. So that put him, that put him, he, he clipped between the inside ship. Like there's like these two ramps that go up to the control panel. Yeah. Damn. He's in that little part in oh, between. Fuck. And I like, I could see it from his view after I died. And it's just like that. He, he recorded it too. So I think he was going to send it. That's funny. But yeah. It's, it's not a bad game. Um, I only played as Bloodhound. Yeah. Which is fine did you get you texted us that you weren't sure on his abilities did that get any more clear i mean the radar like like the the best use case of him rather yeah i mean it's cool to see when how long ago somebody was there it shows me what items they picked up how long ago that happened um but like picking up people on the radar doesn't happen often Hmm. um even when i know there's people nearby we can just like i can see them better than using the radar because i don't know how far that thing goes i feel like it doesn't go far enough yeah. But then again, I don't know how far it actually goes. Um, it did work one time. We saw somebody in the building, and it highlighted orange for me. But that's cool. You're talking about the like like the active one, not yeah, your yeah, like yeah, ultimate. Yeah. yeah, I think that's good for like, clearing out a building like, if you're not sure. Yeah, I, I kind of see the the uses there. Yeah, because what we were doing, we like we would hide in a room, and then I would keep tapping that to see if anybody was coming by. Oh, uh, that's yeah. yeah. And I was like, no, I don't. I mean, we hear gunfire. I was like, I don't see anybody, so yeah. I guess it's safe. And then, oh, <laughs> nope. <laughs> there goes a bullet. Did you play uh, as anybody else? Do you mostly Pathfinder, right? Yeah, I I played with a couple characters, uh, but I still kind of find myself coming back to Pathfinder. I'm I'm getting used to like moving around the level with the like um, the, the grappling hook or, or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Um, I actually messed around. I downloaded the uh, data mining launcher called Origin and actually uh, played Apex yeah. Legends on PC. Nice and. The only thing that's weird is you can I my belief just based on UI and HUD stuff that this was like built from from console, like uh and then like kind of ported the PC. It's just like I can understand that. I can just see like like PUBG and uh, I don't even know Fortnite, but like PUBG is just very like you can tell the UI was made for a PC. PC. Yeah, and it's like just some of this stuff is just like I can see where they had the the ideas for console first and then that makes sense. brought some of that stuff over but no i like playing it i you know definitely if you have a pc that can you know run it better than the console it definitely will run better uh the other thing is I, this might be the place to play if you're playing by yourself because the pc community 90 percent of people that are playing have headsets and there was a lot of you know that, that's any game too uh, I, I noticed that a lot in rainbow six and other shooters that i played uh dota as well but yeah i you know, I actually I did get a chicken dinner uh, on PC. I was playing with someone who carried me to victory, but I found some like decent use cases for like uh, my ultimate. Mm-hmm. Um, on uh, on Pathfinder, like there was one where like the guy I was carrying us went back to get a guy who was down, but he was outside the barrier, so it was like important like time in his heels. But when he got to him, I was like, "Oh, Shaq could do this," so I sent that um, the uh, the. Um, the zip line? Yeah, the zip line out, like, where he was oh, at. And I was cool. like, oh, dude, guys, hop on this. Come here. Nice. Uh, nice, nice. Uh, so, so yeah, that's... as soon as he got up, he was – we got up. And then uh, when we won, uh, there was, like, this very, like, taller, like, kind of rock that, like, you you couldn't really peek over the edge without, um, without like, falling off. But you could see, like, 70% of, like, the area that was in the last couple circles. 
see so was the guy he was carrying i was like dude um zip line up to there we'll hang out there and we'll wait and see if we see anyone so yeah we hung up there and then once we uh couldn't find them and like the circle was super small like it literally like 30 percent of this little cliff was in the circle we were like yeah. all right they got to be under us let's drop down and wreck them and then yeah we won oh, that's really good. yeah so i you know messing around with uh with him it's nice to get to know some other uh some of his abilities a little bit more but no i like that game a lot uh it it is that shooting man it is a lot of bullets to take someone mm-hmm. out it's a pretty small map too yeah in the end like when you think about it yeah i don't think it's much i think it's same similar size to black ops uh, i mean i wouldn't know i feel like it I don't know. I think about PUBG and how big PUBG feels. Like maybe it's because so many of the environments here feel the same or similar that it feels a lot smaller than it is. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like I know this one more intimately than some of the other ones. I mean, I like it though. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, it's not a, a, a knock against it or anything like that. But I yeah I I'll, I like the indoor structures. Yeah. I don't know. There's just something about a small map. I just like being on my. F- toes at all times like i just feel like PUBG. there's just so much time Waiting. between yeah. a firefight and then when it finally comes 15 minutes in it's just like god like and you lose it's like well fuck and now i gotta yeah. wait into the lobby where I, you know i gotta hear all these racist comments yeah um in china number one and people on fire in their underwear and i then, played around a PUBG after apex oh uh, did you i played apex feel? uh i is it xbox you played on yeah that's right you don't you don't own on pc period right no yeah okay. yeah um because i i I jumped into Apex uh, with my nephew on Xbox, and we played a bit, um, and we had played PUBG a whole bunch last year, so we get to a point, and he was like, do you want to play PUBG? And I was like, no, but I'll do a round. Let's do a round. They got that winter map now, right? Um, so that winter map's pretty good. Oh, really? Um, yeah. Like, footprints. I don't even think I played the third map, to be honest. I think I did. I did a round in there. The, the winter map's cool. Like, they've got footprints. Um, they've got snowmobiles. And if someone drives a snowmobile, like, you can literally just follow the tracks of the snowmobile to where that's they are insane. or where they crashed because mm-hmm. that's what happens because that thing's uncontrollable. <laughs> um, but what's fucked is I, we – he told me – like, I was amazed, like, watching the footprints. I was like, yo, look at this. And he was like, yeah. Like, he was – because he, <laughs> he's seen it. And I was like, no, this is cool, dude. Like, this adds a whole new gameplay element. Like, you got to – he's like, yeah, I know. He's like, you can like follow those idiots that just went by on the snowmobile to wherever they are. And I was like, really? I was like, let's fucking do it. And we walked up and they had crashed. And I was like, uh, 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 and then we were dead. I would be that person that purposely makes a foot, yep. like a footpath. Like, yeah, follow this. And then it's going to be like, it's just going to like say like, you're dumb. I want to walk backwards. <laughs> draw a dick while walking backwards. <laughs> and then, yeah. Is there some kind of like... um mechanic to hide footprints or is it just you're fucked or you just, is there you like just terrain a, that you can walk on that doesn't show it you just equip a broom and you just sweep behind you <laughs> i there wasn't anything that i saw um i mean for real i, I don't know yeah. last time you guys went to a baseball game but you know those things they use to kind of like yeah. break the field and mm-hmm. pave like the the yeah, dirt if you could grab one of those that'd be like dope. put something like some small that goes attached to your waist and you just drag it behind you like that would work. i can't imagine a game doing something like that right now I, I don't like, think I think so. I, just didn't know I think there, there are any areas kind of... of the map that aren't snowy, like, though, so you could get to that, and there would not. Yeah, that might be the way to do it. But I was impressed because I, I feel like I remember Ben saying that it didn't track snow or footprints. No, I mean, I, or there's like main roads to go from like area to area. Like yeah. that might be because usually rule of thumb well, is I, stay no, off the I main think road. He probably played it early enough that it was you know what I mean, like test yeah. server or whatever shit. So. Oh, no, I'm just thinking strategy wise, like yeah. maybe this time around, like the main road doesn't track your footprint, so you're kind of maybe encouraged to go so that way, yeah. which is a little bit different from the rule of thumb, like hide in the bathtub. Yeah, yeah. No, it was it was cool. It was definitely a uh, a contrast to Apex, where the you know what I mean. Like the, Apex is just so fast, and so um, there's those moments where obviously you're like just kind of waiting, like what's gonna happen? Am I gonna see anybody? But PUBG, it's just so. And say, so I mean, quiet. there's something to that, you know, the counters being so long that when you do kill someone, it's almost to that counter strike or rainbow six way of like, oh, all right, I got someone there, you know, that it takes a lot to kill someone or it takes a lot of strategy and a lot of good thoughts. I don't know. I, I didn't, I, I kind of do get that feeling from Apex just because it takes so many fucking bullets to down yeah. someone. Uh, yeah, that's just, but yeah, like I, I hate that like, feeling playing Black Ops 4. I haven't touched it in a while, but I know when I was playing, like, killing someone, like, 
wasn't that big of a deal. Pop, pop, I feel pop, like pop, I was done. like killing two people per game or one or two people at least before I died or whatever. Yeah. So. What else you get into this week, man? Uh, it's still on the Destiny grind. I didn't do anything like major. It's just me popping in, doing a task or two to get some powerful gear and hopping out. Clocking in. I'm not clocking. I, don't, I probably am, like, the, theor, theoretically, but it doesn't feel like that yet. It doesn't That's feel good. like a grind, which is what I keep saying. Like, until, like, once it finally hits that, that's when I'm out and I'm on to other things. But I can, like, with me actually playing other things, uh, I my time in it has definitely gone down. It started to feel like clocking in for me this week. But then the other thing is, like, the stuff that I'm missing, I like, before when I was clocking in, it always felt like if I didn't get it, I was losing out on it and or a missed opportunity to get gear. Like, this this week, like, I know there's going to be things I'm not, like, the Black Armory, I finally unlocked it. Yeah. I'm not touching those bounties because I know I'm never going to, I'm not going to get them done this week. That was the and shit it that, doesn't bother me. The only thing that bothered me is that I'm at 649 now and I'm sitting right on the cusp of, I need literally one weapon to draw everything's <clears throat> all my gear all my weapons are 650 except for one and if i get that one then i can teeter over the edge to the the max power cap or power whatever the fuck um and it won't drop so then i'm chasing down every opportunity to get powerful gear and it just feels so tedious because it's not fun it's not like hey i'm gonna do this thing because it's fun to do it's like no let me type in these three keywords into fucking bing Get some shitty website that says, need to get this? Go to this and do this. So I'm like running into the same fucking lost sector over and over again to farm this stupid. It just feels like shit. It just doesn't. It's not fun to do at all. It's just a checklist at this point. Yeah, I found a, uh, I'm doing the exotic. I think it's for Mal- Malfeasance. Mal- 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 yeah, that's it. Uh, I think that's the one that requires you to take out 25 taken mini bosses or bosses. Yeah, I one. did that like a month ago and I fucking hated every moment of it. I just did it naturally. Like I didn't. I was doing it naturally, but it, it just felt like forever. Then I, I did do a public event and it came kind of quickly, which was nice, but man. But then like the mission afterwards, I was like, oh, mission, I'll do it. Easy. And then I realized it was that strike and I was like, oh, this might be tough. And, you know, I, I was dying, but I was never getting frustrated. I knew like I could get through it. And then I got to an area and I was trying to do it by myself and it was it just seemed impossible and i was like all right fuck this like what yeah how and then i saw like you it's recommended fire team of three i mean god okay yeah I'll, we're leaving that and i'm trying anymore i'm done uh and then turns out you have to do that mission too so we'll try to maybe tag team that which and that would be fun like we yeah. can do it together and that, that's yeah. cool but like the just like and then even this week was the crimson days yeah then i got the bow i don't even care i get the bow at this point yeah <laughs> like Unless, cool unless you're on or someone that we know is on, like a Joe or, or, yeah. or, or a Dom, I mean, you know, I, I might finish it off. I'm probably only like three or four matches away, but fuck that. I'm never playing, but I'm not solo queuing into that ever again. No, I play two terrible. games. It's the worst experience ever. The the playlist this week is 2v2s because it's Valentine's Day, so you got to find a partner. Um, Which is fine. It's fine. Because me and you did like, we good. Did. Yeah, we yeah. did well. But it's because we had communication mm-hmm. and we stuck together and you – there's literally buffs and, and debuffs if you are close or far apart um, from your partner. So you were encouraged to play close together and whatever. Um, in fact, if you move apart, it lets the enemies know where both of you are. There's targets that come up on the screen. So you can they can see through walls. That one's over there. This one's over here. And when you play with a stranger who just says, fuck it, you're just fucked. Yeah, we're playing Call of Duty. Yeah, like they just you're run, just run in straight and, in and uh, think they're going to take out 1v2. Like it, yeah. It's not how this game it's works. Like me playing Gambit. Um yeah, I, that's that, that's that. I mean, I jumped back into my hunter for five minutes. How was that? that uh, I like hunter. I'm assuming it wasn't great if it was only for five minutes. Well, honestly, it was like right before I was signing off. Oh, because I was done with like the 650 grind. I did everything but the forges. Get that? Yep. And I was like about to start a forge, and I was like, "Fuck this! Just fuck all of this," because I almost I in order to do the forge, I had to calibrate the weapon frame. And I did everything. And then I did everything. And I was like, all right, now I can. I have to do fucking. Nope. Fuck this. I'm done. Because the last thing I had to do was like fucking uh, super kills or whatever. Yeah. Like, fuck this. So I signed off and I was like, I started sending gear over to my hunter already. Let me just jump in. And I jumped in and I did the opening to uh, Warmind. 
on my hunter. Oh I, yeah, yeah you're I had never done. Yeah. It. I, the last time I touched my hunter was when you and I did Curse of Osiris. Oh shit! All right. So I jumped in, started the beginning of Warmind, played maybe like thirty minutes, and then well, as we found out, <laughs> that opening mission's five minutes long. Yeah, yeah, that was the best heroic. Yeah, daily mission. Pretty good. Um, I did that for a bit, and then deleted my Titan. And made a new one, and then did the level jump, which that skips the core campaign and the two expansions, gets you right ready for Forsaken level thirty. It does that. Yeah. If you start a new character, you have that little boost. You know what I'm talking about? Have you seen that on the main menu? No. Is this something you have to acquire? It's something that when you buy Forsaken, it gives you one of these per account. Hmm. So you can skip the main Destiny 2 campaign, Curse of Osiris, and Warmind one time for free. You can buy it if you want to like pay real money for the skip, but it'll skip through all the core content. I feel like it doesn't matter because you're going to be replaying those missions anyway. You replay the missions all the fucking time for all the strikes and all the adventures and stuff, but you can skip those things if you wanted to jump right to Forsaken. I just, I just think that's funny. Yeah. Like, hey, we... We don't care about our story. But it, it makes it... <laughs> I think it's. Uh, I think they did it for people who wanted to roll multiple characters. Yeah. Which that makes sense. I mean, sense. I figured that's... Because that's, that's why I did... Because I kind of was curious about Titan. So I... But I wasn't going to play through the whole thing with Titan. Fuck that. So I hit the button and it went from zero to fucking 30 and skipped all three campaigns. And then when you go to the tower, um, Tess has a... Th- she has three boxes for you. One for completing the Red War campaign, one for completing Osiris, and one for completing Warmind. You open them up and it gives you random pieces of gear from each of those campaigns. It's kind of cool. It'd be interesting to see now with Bungie being like separated from Activision entirely. I mean, still it's on Battle.net, but I wonder if they ever like bring it to Steam and then put it on sale. Yeah. That would be a bad idea. Like maybe that's when I finally get a PC character. Maybe I might run Titan or Warlock just to do something different. Nope, only Epic Games Store. Oh god. We're there. That's fine. Mm. My hope. I just want. I just wanted to go and like I wanted to move and go on sale, and that'd be cool. My hope, just because I've invested so much time into this side of things, is is to have a, a cross, not save. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. the ultimate goal, right? Progress across both. No matter where I pick it up, I can just pick up the same. I don't know if that'll work or not, but if it can, I'd like it. Um, yeah, Destiny. And then uh, keep keeping on the train of the auto chest. Yeah, how's that going? It's fine. You know, it's frustrating as all hell because I'm thinking I'm a little late to the party and everyone knows strategy. So it's just like fucking Dota. You have to learn the heroes. You have to learn their classes because you have to learn. Because if you have a certain lineup with like a certain number of orcs or warriors or elves or any of like the eight, 12 classes that there are, you get certain buffs. Like some of them like may proc the shield when they're hit or they get a shield buff or your whole team gets more strength and you have to kind of play off that based on like what heroes you're getting every round and like that random roll of heroes to buy. So, I mean, there's a lot of strategy that goes into it. That's what I'm trying to learn now. Uh, but there is a ranking system. So it kind of keeps me in like the certain area of players that are around my rank, which is nice. I'm not queuing up against someone unless they make some kind of fucking dumb subclass, but you know, sub like, alternate sub account, account yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but at least like I feel like I'm competitive, and I did win one game, and I've you know finished uh, top two or three, I think like three times now, including that win. Nice. But uh, but yeah, it's it's tough. And it's like and once again, it's one of those things like each game is an investment. Like if you're going for a win, you're going to be there for 45 minutes. Man. Like I usually. So what did you one a night, two a night? It depends if I'm you know if I'm working the next day or late the next day i might like sometimes just get lost in it because honestly all i do i keep the volume on that low i keep my home i, I turn just turn on music on my home pod keep down low and it's kind of just like kind of spaced out and before i know i've played like three games and it's two o'clock in the morning sometimes jesus because it, it's, it's addicting moments. it's I, addicting man like the games feel long and when you lose you're like damn but then like it doesn't feel like i play for 40 minutes yeah. like yeah. PUBG, when i lose it felt like 20 minutes because yeah. i was waiting for someone yeah. this because it's so fast yeah, you have to stay on your toes. Quick decision making. Uh, it 
yeah, the 40 minutes goes by real fast, and I'm, like, excited to go back into the next game to see, like, all right, what can be my build be this time? Oh, maybe I should go maybe more elf because they got – I've been – I keep seeing the shield that other, that other thing – the other people are using to fuck me over. So, yeah. Still strong, going strong. Like, that's taking up most of my time this week. That's the new Destiny. <laughs> yeah. Did that lead you back to more Dota or no? Not yet. I thought about queuing in, but it was 2 in the morning. I was like, oh, I got time for an hour-long yeah. game. <laughs> yeah. I don't even know where to start because there's been too many patches since the last time I played. I wouldn't know what characters are good anymore. Yeah. I'll do a little more research. Um, speaking of investing some time and then not winning and then jumping right back in because it didn't feel like it was that long at all. Well, this one really isn't. There's a new Battle Royale. Probably the, the one we've been waiting for, I think. I didn't think it was possible, but I didn't we got either. it. Like never, but I thought yeah. I've been thinking a lot about all other sorts of games that could be a battle royale. Like I think Twisted Metal would be a great battle royale, but Tetris 99 swooping into the scene. Yeah. it's. I mean, I know it's always had like a two player mode or like a versus yeah, yeah. mode of some kind and it can be fun, but I just ultimately at its roots, I've never viewed Tetris as a, that kind of game. Even though it always had that option, yeah. So for some reason, like it's, I'm surprised it didn't happen sooner. Like I'm surprised yeah. like there wasn't some like online thing, way back. Yeah, this seems like. like a... I mean, it probably wouldn't have been 99. Yeah. But maybe there would have been like a f- eight player or something. I you know I think there was though. Was there? I feel like even that shitty Ubisoft one. No, maybe Tetris or the Splash. EA one. No, the ones like in the last few years, they were just Tetris. But it was you oh. know, Tetris published by EA, Tetris published by UB. Yeah. Uh, but this one, published by Nintendo. Um, so, it took me a minute to figure out the actual... Because you're playing Tetris, but there's yeah. other shit to it. So, uh, if you haven't seen this yet, it's the Tetris board in the center of the screen, as it always is. And then on either side of you are... 49? There's an even amount of other mini Tetris boards that are representing other players on each side of your board. I think it's 49 on each side. That would make sense. That would get you to 98. Yep, there you go. And then you're number 99. In the center. Tetris 99. Math. Get it? Yep. Mark, you get it? So there's 49 on either side. Math. Algebraic. And it's everyone else who's playing at the same time. Um... And then you, as you complete lines, are sending your garbage blocks to one of those boards. And the way you do that is, with your left analog stick, you can move your reticle and target someone. Or the right analog stick lets you auto-target between, and you can choose between randoms, people who are attacking you, people who have uh, knocked out the most people, or people who are close to being knocked out. So if you want to like gang up on someone as they're almost at the top of their board, you can do that, which and, feels and like you, shit when it fucking happens to you. And you click in the left stick. You're just pushing it in just a direction. Pushing. The the left stick you are moving and it's going to move. There's a little like a uh, hexagonal badge mm. that you move across the screen. Yeah. See, I would do the auto thing. I mostly do the auto thing. Um, like whoever's attacking me. Just because it's easiest to. Yeah. The only problem with choosing who's attacking you is sometimes you'll have multiple people who end up on you because of um i mean if the numbers are slowing down and if that's that's where it gets tricky like if someone is attacking you because they're set to random um and it's just hitting you and you pull it to attackers to try and scare them off sometimes it works against you because by them by you attacking them now they're gonna pull down to attackers and attack back to you if that makes sense Hmm. so you end up with a lot more people looking at you so i'll usually like if i have a couple people attacking me i'll target them clear out a couple lines and then move back to randoms or something sorry this coffee's hitting me (laughs) um it got really fucking hard this weekend though like i was feeling pretty good midweek like i was top 10 pretty consistently uh i don't think i won one yet the highest i got was two um but the fucking last night I was playing and it was literally I couldn't get past. I think one time I got above 30 
it was just nonstop. Like it would all come at once, like in waves, just I'd be doing okay. And then all of a sudden five people are targeting me and dumping garbage blocks and the screen just fills up way too quickly and it's over. I'd have to try it. I don't know if that's something I would play for a long time. When I was doing good, when it wasn't that like overwhelming piece, I felt better about it. But now and I'm like, Ooh. that's what I'm hoping for, Mark, because uh, I found out that my Nintendo Switch can connect to the internet. It, really? It, it, yeah, it, it does that successfully. Not just to update my games and go into the eShop, but uh, my account can launch a Nintendo Online membership hmm. if I needed to. Hmm. Now, remember, I've been banking on this free week for a long time mm-hmm. and waiting for the moment, and this was the one to get me to do it. So I hit that free, uh, hit that free membership button. Immediately, turn off auto renewal. Damn it! And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, come on. I'm a, I'm a regular consumer. I'm gonna I, say I, I, I got it. I got it. I'm not gonna fall for some dumb monthly bullshit. I'm gonna give you twenty bucks. No, I I'll spend it me, on garbage. Like, Tetris for me is more of like a therapeutic thing. This is good. I like the systems. It's. What do you mean? Like the whole like targeting. The, yeah, the whole targeting thing. Like I think. Yeah. If you could bump up the player count, it would get even more crazier, and the systems would work even more flawlessly. You think? I love that KO translates into like what they call badges. Yeah. And then those badges give you a bump for like say like you take you do two lines. It will like if you have enough like badge badges from your KOs, you will send like double the lines yeah. over as garbage. And then there is a counter system to the attacking thing. So, yeah, like someone could gang up on you, but, or like multiple people can, but if there's like six people all attacking at the same time, you get some kind of buff where yeah. it's the same thing as the badge thing, where mm. like the amount of, it's, it's some kind of weird multiplier where it takes like three people attacking you to get double the line. So, like the more you could maybe quad it or, yeah. you know, whatever. And you can kind of make them back off a little bit. Yeah. Hmm. And then I've noticed that, like, I've maybe had like, one time I had like six people attacking me. I lined like I had a Tetris ready to go in the bank for when I needed it. Yeah. And I saw like, oh shit, things are about to get bad. So I I hit my two Tetrises back to back. Yeah. I heard KO, 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 yeah. KO. It was great. And then I saw I got the badges and I knew I got the multiplier going. And then the uh just the dumb if you're that good, especially late game with all this chaos going on with your board, because of course that's the as the player count gets lower and lower, that's when the Tetris speed goes up and up, like yeah. the level, like speed. Mm, yeah. Uh, like if you can control that and look around the board, like you can see your next possible KO and manually target them. You don't yeah. have to use the random thing. It's fucking nuts, but it it works almost perfect. Now I don't know what the balance then looks like. It's hard for me to tell. Yeah. Uh, and I did have to look up that reset error page to fully understand what was going on, but. I, I get it now. Is there, did someone explain more? Yes. Than, okay. I'll yep. They, that. they go into all the percentages, the multipliers. Oh, good. There yeah. Was yeah. Shit, they, um, I found out like if you T-spin, you get more lines than not. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to learn T-spin. I don't know though. how to T-spin. I'm not that good. It's like very last minute rotating. Yeah. Well, I mean, I get the concept. Yeah. I just can't. You need to set up for it. That's the that's yeah. the, the hard part that I can't really get. I should into. maybe play Puyo Puyo. Because Puyo Puyo is more about the setup than it is like the actual like moment to moment thinking. Like Tetris yeah. is for me. I feel yeah. like if I play yeah. a little more Puyo Puyo, I would get in that mindset a little bit more. Yeah, Puyo is uh, – man, like, Puyo wants you to think like 30 steps ahead. That's exactly what like, a good T-spin <laughs> yeah. could do. That's mm. – mm. I can't feel good. My brain hurts. I, I'm, too, I'm too dumb for Puyo. <laughs> I really like it a lot, and then I feel like that's the perfect opportunity where if I need to practice, I'll go to the real Tetris game, Tetris Effects, mm, just mm, zen mm. out a little bit, practice, there you go. and then yeah, get back. Tetris DS. <laughs> <laughs> this has the trapping, the same Trojan horse effect as Tetris on Game Boy a little bit. Like, mm. I feel like Apex is already dead. Just going to put that out there. I wanted to mention. Stop. <laughs> Stop. I, I, I thought of you when I was at Katsukon. Ah, so like Fortnite's dead. There was that's for sure. Just different parts of the halls or whatever. It's different areas of the, of the hotel slash convention center. People are just sitting in, like along the walls or whatever, be on their phones or eating or whatever. Sometimes people play music. Mm-hmm. Um, this girl whipped out an accordion, and was playing Tetris. Like, yeah. All right. I was like, like I thought, I thought it was somebody's like Bluetooth like boombox yeah. walking through or something. No, then an accordion. I, and I turn around, and I just see her. I'm like. Right on, man. All right. Was she dressed as a tetramino? No. Uh, she was, but, like, just a plain accordion. Where are you doing most of your Tetris playing? Where? Yeah. Couch. Couch. Toilet. Jesus. <laughs> yeah. 
Mine would probably be bed. <laughs> yeah, it's it's been like. Have you played a doc? Uh, I did. Uh, I did, and that's why before we started playing the podcast, I was trying to get that eight bit do controller oh, to work. Okay. I need a better D pad if I'm gonna play it doc. Yep. Because even I, I didn't play it doc, but I, I just know from playing uh shovel knight. Well, and when we played yeah. Tetris, like Puyo Puyo Tetris, playing with oh, that pro true, controller yeah. sucked. Mm-hmm. That it's accidental hard, that. accidental hard drops, man. You move left and it fucking falls. You're like, nope, that's not what I wanted to do. Hmm. The I played Joy-Con. Um, last night I was playing with, I was playing handheld with Joy-Con, and then the way I was sitting, I was just like, I need to fucking lay. So I laid down on the couch and then kickstanded it and. Swip, swipe the you joy cut off or was... one on the side can you do one on the side uh, I, don't, I don't know I'm not, I, 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 I can't uh, imagine you can because of the button but I did the two in both hands and that felt a little well mostly just because like you're the way the joy con fit naturally in your hand when you're just holding it by itself is to put your thumb on the yeah. thumbstick and not the button so that felt a little awkward um, what I really want is 8-bit do to release the zero two. 2 so I can use that. That's a little mini boy. Like I got the little zero up there, but you can't use that one on Switch. So I, I don't know. I also bought the NES controllers, the Joy, the NES Joy-Con. So they should be here this week. I'd love to try it with that, just to see if that. I don't think I can though. I don't think there's enough buttons on there to do the. Whatever. You also need two sticks too. You gotta yeah. keep that in mind. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think they're gonna add more to this. Yeah, it's very bare bones. It's very bare bones. Did you dig through the stats at all? Yeah. Did you notice that it there's two tabs? Mm-hmm. All and then Tetris 99, as if to imply there will be other game modes. And I wonder if that's where they make their money on this. Do they have different Maybe. filters? No, but that could be another thing. Because to... I would, yeah, I would like. I don't. I don't care for. The, yeah, the, the standard Tetris. That, yeah, I'm you know kind of I mean? over that design. I want the blue background. Every. Colors. Of, I mean, every other shape's purple. Different that color. one's orange. That one's yeah. 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 Tetris kind of effects spoiled yeah. by give me some like the chanting orange fire shit going on in the background between, and yeah, like metamorphosis. Effect, <laughs> be like between effect and NES, dude. Any I do like that they got like the Game the Boy music. NES. Yes, they got the right music, which is good. And then they remix it when it gets and speed it up. Yeah. It's it's that's I like that. But if you could do, I think it's stage five or six from NES. Oh, 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 bitch! I don't remember the stages at all. Oh, uh, we'll we'll pop it in. We'll give you a taste. All right. Fuck, it's so good. Speaking yeah, of NES, I also fell into the Legend of Zelda this weekend, which is kind of what put the cap on Destiny for me. I think. Which one? The Legend of Zelda. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. It was so freeing, just wandering through that little world. Just getting lost. And the first time I played through that game was on the Wii Virtual Console. And I was overwhelmed and... I don't know how many versions of that game that I own. All of them. Like, I have the Game Boy Advance one. I have the NES cartridge. You have Game Boy? Or GameCube, rather? Um, I have the GameCube one. I have the 3DS one. Oh, the, the Virtual, Virtual Console. Console. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And... I think that might be it. Wow, that's a lot of copies for a game you don't like. <laughs> no, that is a game I like. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, ben doesn't like it. I don't think Ben, well, doesn't, ben doesn't like, like it. No, 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 I think ben, ben just likes 2. A no, lot. he said fuck Zelda. Zelda 2 is better. I, ben, confirm, please. Yeah. The, <laughs> um, well, it doesn't matter. He doesn't like Tetris, so. <laughs> uh, yeah. It, fuck it. Opinion not valid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> his midweek text message <laughs> sorry i'm stopped at work just want to drop in and say fuck tetris <laughs> ben. we miss you um no uh the first time i played through the legend of zelda was with a fucking guide on my phone just like go here next go there next and this time i was like it, maybe it's just because of so much of what i've been doing in destiny i just needed i think subconsciously that kind of sense of wonder again yeah and i just have this general like curiosity about me like i wonder what's on the screen and you just kind of wander and then you know before it was very much like literally the, the guide i had used i mean this is probably a decade ago or better was laid out that just said 
bomb this bush or burn this bush, bomb this rock. And now I'm doing that stuff naturally and I'm not afraid of the consequences because I'm almost willing to die. And it feels a lot like playing through Bloodborne for the first time again where I'm like, See, I don't know. You you just get to know. I had to do this with a 3DS because like, that's the first time I beat it. I had to have those quick saves. I'm not not using the the well no I'm not using the quick saves actually. yeah like, the only time I'm quick saving is when I'm done for the night well yeah that too because like because I, I, I'm doing it intentionally because I just I fucking need it like, like I, the I majority of secrets that. is just you getting rupees yeah and then it and then like it costs rupees to to try to get the rupees yeah it's like to almost do everything but I'm okay like shooting arrows cost money. yeah I'm okay with it though yeah. I'm like it, I I don't know I fell completely back in love with that game. I just everything you find is just like, hey, we want to kill you. Just heads up. But that's that's fine. <laughs> yeah. Like as soon as the bloodborne like mm-hmm. f- fluids started dripping through my brain as I'm playing this, I was just committed. I like, think I'm wandering. I all I've got, the only things I'm equipped outside of the game mm-hmm. are what came with the game originally. I have a PDF of the manual and I have the scan of the map that was in the box. That's all I'm using. And I'm barely looking at the map. Like I'm doing my best to like just wander and mm-hmm. get to know the roots there. Like I died in the middle of the second dungeon and I was like done for the night. And I was like, I was like, I'm going to bed. Um, so I hit save instead of continue. And then I was like, ah, fuck, I want to jump back in. And it put me back at the beginning instead of back at the beginning of the dungeon. Like, cause when you die in right. a dungeon, you start at the beginning of the dungeon. Mm-hmm. If you go back to the menu and go back in, no. So, uh, I was like, fuck, how do I get back there? And I like tried to wander for a while and I started to get it. Like, and it's that same sense of like, you don't even think about it. You just know how to get back to central Yarnum, and you know how to get down that elevator really quick. Like, it's just, yeah. Like the map isn't like, it feels big, but once you're like, you know it, you know, it, like, to it, really you're like well. all right. Yeah. <sighs> Cause half this shit, you don't even going to go back to, I could listen to that dungeon music for literal decades. It's just, it's I cool that. Like, when you're low on health, it only plays certain instruments. Dude, it's just, it's just such a good fucking game, which is, I mean, obviously, duh, (laughs) but I don't, I haven't dicked around with too much of this switch online stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, like I did, I played a bunch of Metroid. I played a couple hours of Metroid. Um, and I was like drawing out the map for myself and everything, which was fun. But then even that, I kind of like got tired of the, the grind, but I don't know. It just feels good. I'm happy they put Mario two on there. Yeah. Oh, like I gotta show you, because I've been really agitated by that layout. So I spent time and relaid it out for myself. I'm so happy with oh, it. Oh, you can do that. Yeah, it's really cool. Okay. I laid it out with um, because I didn't know they were they were gonna do like another SP version. There's like two SP. There's two versions. SP versions of Metroid. What? One is <laughs> just one cuts you to the Ridley battle. The other one is, I think you're back at the beginning, but you have all of the armor unlocked. They should just be switch together as two different op- game a and game b which one do you want Wh- which sp version i don't but after i reorganize it i'm happier with it i've yeah. got it set up with the like core nintendo titles that i really want to play up top beneath that i've got the black box games beneath that i've got other published by nintendo then i've got the sp games and then i've got all third party stuff mm. and it's just it's clean like laid out it looks really nice i just don't want like five sps of one game I just Depending think, I, on I, which, I, I just think it looks ugly. When you put them together, it's not. It, it look, I'm telling you, it looks better. Okay. I promise. It's not the best, but there's a couple things I want out of that a little bit. Like it could be that Switch Online, like the NES thing, could be just if they had an auto sort option, that could help. Um, if they included the manuals in there, so that I don't have to whatever right uh pull it off my phone which is it's fine but also like i'd, I'd like just Wait, that they could do it though because the classics have it that's what i mean and that's literally where i got the zelda manual was i went to that classics website and downloaded the pdf from there um and then the uh the actual like while you're playing i don't like the borders they have on the side did you fire it up at all no, no, you're fuck no. Oh my I god. Don't know. No. Are you talking like the dots and the gray? Yeah, it's fine, but like yeah. I want a little bit of customization options or the ability to just go full black screen. Like the Game Boy. Player. I want to be able to drop off the like the menu options at the bottom of the screen. Like I just hmm. Yeah. They could get there. I'm not I don't know that they will, but they could and, and I hope they do. Um Yeah. Zelda. 
that's cool i feel like after the third dungeon it like if the speed picks up it does yeah because then you kind of know the pace of what you're supposed to do and, and yeah it's real good real good um we're gonna take a break when we come back we'll have a little little taste of that news we'll recap the nintendo direct uh a little bit because chances are you watched it we're not going to spend more than the time it would take you to just watch the direct to tell you about it but we'll certainly talk about that uh and then maybe a little hot topic of the week after this It's the second half of the podcast. You know what that means. It's hammer time. Time to plug shit. Hey, we got a couple new things on the website this week. We normally do this part at the end, but that's the part where everyone's like, huh, I got to get out of the car now. And they turn it off. They don't hear it. We're putting them right here, right up front. We got Combo Breaker went live last week, which we talked about at the end of last podcast. But if you're one of those people who gets out of their car, you probably didn't know about that. So Castlevania Judgment's up on the site. You can watch Mark throw his back out. Using motion controls in a fighting game for a reason yep. unbeknownst to all of us. Front and back. Yeah. Uh, and then Friday, we saw the debut, or continuation, but now we've defined it, mm-hmm. of Free Cheese Wrestling. Matt, you want to tell the world all about Free Cheese Wrestling? Oh, You is. are the fucking, you're the... I'm the Vince McMahon. I didn't want to, I didn't want to pull you down. You know what I mean? I didn't want to give oh. you that. You're right, but I didn't. Oh, Vince McMahon's like a billionaire. It's fine. I'll no, take that. No. Money means nothing. It's a son would be bringing him down. Uh, that's fair. <laughs> Shane, can, Shane can wrestle a little bit. No, uh, Free Cheese Wrestling is, uh, yeah, our continuation of the uh, the uh, the Free Cheese Championship. Um, yeah. I'm using WWE 2K19's universe mode. To kind of set things up, and then uh, every about once a month or so, we'll we'll peek into the universe for uh, the monthly pay per view. We'll do some recaps. We'll see some title defense defenses, and uh, yeah, and maybe some uh, some wild things may happen. That was something. I tell you what. Yep, and then we saw the debut of a brand new championship. Can't forget about that. That new belt, the new mid card belt. Yeah, mid card, mid card. Yep, right. I got it. I'm following. Yeah, it's pretty good. I'm um, so yeah. Just, uh, tune in, see if John Cena defended his belt. Then what other wild things could have happened? Oh, oh, and they will happen. Uh, so there you go, a little bit of free cheese stuff. We got more stuff on the way, uh, which we won't talk about here. But keep your eyes peeled to the internet. I'm sure you'll find it if you want more of that stuff. Speaking of things that you. Uh, or rather opposed to things that you do want. Uh, Jim Ryan just got appointed uh, president and CEO of Sony Interactive Entertainment, uh, thereby canceling the future of backwards compatibility. Turns out uh, this news article says he ate that patent and said, fuck you. (laughs) Who would want to play that anyway? Now, uh, Mark did point out uh, in, in response to this press release, this is effective April 1st, 2019. Uh, while many would believe that's because it's the beginning of the new fiscal year, true uh, people with, with, with foresight or for skin would know <laughs> April 1st is a- April Fool's Day. So, you know, think about that. Or maybe that just means the joke's on us. Yeah, shit. Because it's true. Yeah. Oh, well. The that- idea of backwards compatibility on PS5 was nice. That whole Mark Cerny <laughs> patent. You need it to, was nice. to calm down. Oh, Matt, I can't be calm. Because he, he's in America. Japan still... Japan, right? Yeah, Japan still has the mothership. You tell me one Don't person the... who has two first names that's trustworthy. <laughs> Aha! You can't. You can't. I'm, I'm trying to. I'm trying to find someone else. <laughs> I, with am two two. First, I am too. I am too. First name. It probably is. <laughs> I probably not. Drew, I can't think Drew of, Carey. You think you can trust Drew Carey? Hell yeah. yeah. You sure? Dude, I love Drew Carey. Who's lying anyway? You can love people and not trust them at the same time. Why? I don't know. <laughs> 
Cleveland Rocks. I don't know. That's true. I forgot about that show. Speaking of weird decisions that I, I that's a bad segue. Crossplay friends list will go live in Rocket League on February nineteenth. Finally. Uh so crossplay this is kind of our mini hot topic of the week. Because we got a couple news stories running about crossplay. The first one started with uh, Jim Ryan being appointed CEO. Because remember what he said. It's not, not sure. just the backwards compatibility thing that is like, dude, what are you doing? But also remember Jim Ryan was the one when Minecraft was announced to be crossplay, where at an interview it was like, Hey, why aren't Sony doing this? And Jim Ryan said, We need to protect the children. And the interviewer said, Yeah, but Nintendo's doing it. And uh, I feel like they're the most focused on children of all the children focusers. And Jim Ryan said, it wouldn't be safe. Anyway. This sounds more like a bad head of PR than anything. I feel like Sean Lane makes no decisions. He's just a public figure. Jim Ryan saw that meme for his board. And was just, he went on the wrong board. Yeah. That's all that was. Or he went on the right board. Well, yeah, right for us. Wrong for him. I'm sorry, not Sean Lane. Who is it now? Who's the president? John Cordero? That's it. Yeah. I thought you were just going to just leave with a first name basis. It's just John. John? Yeah, it's John's the, John's <laughs> the current SAE. Uh, no, so Sean Layden. The shoe's the... still there. We're in good hands. Yes. Yes. Dreams will save everything. Sure. Crossplay will save everything. Uh, this is the, the big one, the one we've been waiting for, where um, you could previously go crossplay, switch PS4, Xbox One, and PC on Rocket League, but just for matchmaking. But now... There's a new friends list that populates across every platform, and uh, you can create parties. Now, if this is the Rocket ID. Is that the jam I here? I think so. That would make sense because they would need some kind of background thing to make that happen to identify where you're at. But, yeah, I I, uh, I don't know for sure that's the Rocket ID thing. I hope so, though. The Rocket ID tab will show your Perfect. online friends on all other platforms. Uh, after the update, every player will be auto-assigned a Rocket ID, which will be your username followed by four randomly generated numbers. Steam way. Or you may change the word portion of your Rocket ID at any time. The recent players tab conveniently shows players you were recently matched up with or against. If you had a solid team chemistry with a randomly matched player, you can easily send that player a friend request from the recent players tab if they are on a different platform. Um, there's an alert tab that'll have all of your friend requests, party invites, and club invites, and clubs are cross-platform too. That's dope. So yeah, basically the this is the friends update. It's gonna split the friends list into four tabs: friends, friends, Rocket ID, recent players, and alerts. I wonder if they found out something when it's got one of the because it's been delayed like one or two times. I wonder if they delayed it because of the PlayStation decision at one point. Oh, like when PlayStation yeah. decided to play ball? Mm -hmm. Speaking of which, uh, in our final news story of the week that we'll, we'll kind of talk about here, um, there's an interview with Game Former with Sean Layden. Uh, Sean Layden is uh, the new Jack Trenton, although he'll never be replaced. Never. Um, but Sean runs... Um, Sean. <laughs> like that little first name basis? He runs PlayStation of America... And, uh, yeah, so I'll just read the quote here. Um, we got to that place in Fortnite and it seems to be going reasonably well from what I can tell the rocket league, the rocket league light up will happen soon. People keep saying, why doesn't Sony allow more people to have it? We're open for business on this one. All it takes is for publishers and developers who wish to permission it as ever, just work with your PlayStation account manager and they will walk you through the steps that we've learned through our partnership with Epic on how this works. I don't believe right now there is any gating factor on that. I think they're open to make proposals because the Fortnite thing worked pretty well. Little response. Hi all, CEO of Chucklefish here. We just launched Wargroove with crossplay between PC, Switch, and Xbox, so I wanted to chime in. We made many requests for crossplay, both through our account manager and directly with higher ups, all the way up until release month. We were told in no uncertain terms that it was not going to happen. From our side, we can literally toggle a switch and have it working. Of course, policy work might be more complicated for Sony. Just wanted to provide some balance on the issue and say that it certainly isn't a question of developers having not contacted their account managers or having dropped the ball. We were told no. 
I love that it's literally a switch. Yeah, and this is what it took for Fortnite when it was working for. Because we make those right, jokes half all the time. Uh, yeah, and it, like, just hit the fucking switch and dude. Export everything. It. <laughs> and it news really alert! <laughs> Everything's on Unity. Everything has a port button, yeah. and everything has a switch. Command Shift S. <sighs> Save as. Yep. Save as. I don't know. I don't know. I. I, I don't the future is crossplay. Yeah, the definitely. Future is Jim Ryan. Ah, fuck. Maybe he'll be fine. What if it? What if it turns out to be all right? What if you don't see his face a lot? Like you don't see Kadera a lot. Look, then it's the end of you a meme. You don't see any of these people. Like you see Sean. I I know, but I'm saying like Jim Ryan. I it's fun to to do what I do, but Jim Ryan's not the reason we don't have. Like that is it's not just one man's fault. It is one man that got sent out to take the fucking brunt of it and get shit on on podcasts like this one every week. But it's not Jim Ryan's fault that we don't have backwards compatibility or cross play or any of it. Of this but we also don't That's know it. that either. He also just has. You're a- right. Fuck Jim Ryan. <laughs> No, he's definitely on the video saying dumb shit. No, I, he, he, I he know gets that. Some blame, but if he he, he, might, he might not be the initial core of it, but he said he, he dumb shit. He definitely was when he shit said, sprinkles. "Why wouldn't? <laughs> why would anyone want to play that?" That yeah. was after Sony made the decision not to do backwards yeah. compatibility on this console. Uh, after Xbox started doing backwards compatibility in a light that was done really well. And Sony had the fire under their feet when yeah. people were saying, why aren't you guys doing this? And his response happened to be that. Yeah. Shit sprinkles on a shit Sunday. Yeah. Every time he talks about Jim Ryan, I forget the character. So I, don't, I, I actually don't rem- know what he looks like or don't remember what he looks like. Okay. Every time I, uh, I picture Jim Ryan, it's always the dude from Mr. Robot who took the fall, the head of IT, or not IT, the head of their, uh, the C... T.O.? C.T.O., yeah. Hmm. The one who... Uh, took the fall uh jim ryan looks like if Here we go. He, if gordon ramsay had a cousin and you uh gave him a bad haircut uh, i guess actually should compliment in my opinion because gordon ramsay is a good looking fellow you know what and he looks like share any Mark, qualities do you want to see him that's all right i'd rather just keep picturing him as the evil cto that's a piece of shit and then mr him. robot I'm leaving it away from Matt's no. point of view. <laughs> Am I Is wrong? Is an actual picture of him? <laughs> an actual picture of him. Dude, that does look like Gordon Ramsay's cousin. <laughs> it looks like Gordon Ramsay with an allergy. <laughs> it's also not too far off my opinion of him either. It's true. He can't eat, like, plain potato chips or something. <laughs> the salt swells him up. <laughs> no, it, yeah, they have to be lightly salted. Yeah. There you go. He's in with his white as Seamus in that picture. Oh, Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy. He's not backwards compatible with his whole new <laughs> face. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm done. Yep. Hey, congrats to him, you know? Uh, the weird thing, honestly, about that story with Jim Ryan is that uh, he's moving up to John Cadera's spot, and then John Cadera is going to – it's not a step down, but kind of a new position. He's going to oversee all of, um, like, online hmm. stuff. So uh, Jim Ryan will – I'm sure everything like real like real talk. I'm sure everything's just gonna go seamless as it will be. I don't think it's probably gonna change realize. Much. Oh shit! We should probably have someone in charge of PSN so that way when the fires happen from the day to day, you know, there's someone we can point our finger at. I think <laughs> more the the thing with um, John Cudera taking that shit over is the, the importance of of services moving forward. Like Xbox has built this whole Game Pass narrative and whatever the fuck xCloud is. And now they've got all this weird shit with the, the stuff they're doing at GDC talking about putting, which I, I assume at this point that that Xbox thing where they want it on iOS and Android and Switch and all that, I think that's they're trying to compete with Discord more than anything and get in there that way. I'm okay with that. Oh, yeah. Also, like you have to re- – I forgot about this until just now. Like I-, I forget the exact stat that I told you, but PSN makes a shit ton of money. Oh, yeah. It's um, huge. Yeah, and it, that would make sense that that growing revenue stream needs someone to oversee it and make yeah. sure it's working. And something like it made more than – it's. it made more than what Nintendo is actually worth Yeah, and in like, a year. I mean he definitely yeah. is a man of business. You know what I mean? Like yeah. he's not anything else I feel. So it's appropriate. It, uh, <laughs> God. it's a fucking news story. 
So, sorry. I'm trying to get the exact quote. Uh, John Codera will dedicate his focus on creating, creating innovative user experiences and further enhancing the network area as deputy president of SIE. First response to this is someone screenshotting the why would anyone want to play this says Jim Ryan about backwards compatibility. So is that is that your account? Uh, oh shit! Yeah, sorry, that was for that... real though. Who would go back and play the first Gran Turismo nowadays? I would play Gran Turismo too. Better game. I would play it out of a like. Isn't that still backwards compatibility though? Let me see. Maybe he was talking about the first game and not. Number two. Or I three. Would, that he sucks with words. I would play it out of curiosity. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm throwing it out there. Why have we been wrong this entire time? Maybe he thinks Gran Turismo 1 is a bad game, and he prefers Gran Turismo 2. Uh, I'm pretty just, sure. Just a thought. Pretty we don't sure know the facts. Why, said, why would anybody no, we, think that? We do know the no. facts. I'm pretty sure that story was, I was recently at, I, I've studied this fucking quote, Matt. I was recently at a Gran Turismo event for Gran Turismo Sport, where they had all of the versions from each generation of Gran Turismo. And I looked over at the older PS1 and PS2 versions and thought to myself, why would anyone want to play that? He didn't roll out the PS3. He thinks A-Spec, or not A-Spec, uh, 4? Is it 4? Here's the thing. Is there a window I can jump out of? Jimmy Boy. Uh, It's ground level. (laughs) 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 Nothing's going to happen. Jimmy Boy's going to come home from a a long night. Jimmy Boy. Jimmy Boy's going to come home. Late at night, a long day of work, puts his coat on a coat rack, goes upstairs, goes to his bedroom. Gets his lightly salted chips. He, he goes, he, yeah, you know, for bedtime snack. He goes to <laughs> he goes to touch his touch lamp that has three brightness settings, to, you know, how many times you tap it, but it's not turning on. He doesn't know what's going on. And all of a sudden, he just hears a click of a play button, and it's this recording from that interview. And all of a sudden, Joe's just hiding in the upper corner wearing a Batman suit. <laughs> 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 And then the rest is specifically you were in that Batman mask, and I don't know, it was like a Target that you had on the oh, website, yeah, but yeah, from yeah, before, yeah, yeah. There you specifically go. that mask, it's that cow, and a fucking final shirt. All right, can we talk about the Nintendo Direct? Sure. Right. Uh, first, you never told me I was right. I'm waiting. Fuck you. <laughs> That's Matt for your right. There you go. I was right on a couple occasions here. Sounds like somebody just got his first point of 2019. Super Mario Maker 2 kicking off the Nintendo Direct. What All do you right, think? Well, you know, that's a valid congratulations on your prediction there. Thank you. You didn't guess that, you know, every fucking week. I basically did, though. Basically. I mean, but you ate, you know, points. I'm just yeah. going to throw out half points still on the board with no. Tony Hawk. Um, the one thing I want to point out for Mario Maker 2, did you see the box art? Uh, it's got Luigi on it, right? I'm pretty sure. Well, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it's the official box art. It just or it was just a poster or something. But you saw. Okay, yeah. So you saw Mario and Luigi. They had the hats on, yes. editing a level, and you see a Mar a little Mario in there. You also see a little cat Luigi. Oh boy. And you see Toadette and Toad. Oh, interesting. So I'm thinking four player here. Mm. Interesting. I have to look at that. So I'm thinking between not just playing the games, but also designing levels together. Oh, like different parts of the map or something. Oh, like um, I wonder if you do it like online. little, like kind of like Little Big Planet. So now I think of this, like you think of like Microsoft Cloud and all that, and, like the like like real time collaboration. I wonder if you'd be able to do that shit from afar. Hmm, maybe I was thinking only ad hoc, but yeah, that could. Hmm, hmm. that's what I'm thinking. It's not a bad idea, or you can create co op levels. And then that can get really weird where, like, you make those types of levels where, like, you reply, you require one person to do one thing to secure the next area. That is the only way you could do a co-op level with Mario because it's just a mess, <laughs> as we learned. Or just <laughs> or, or just have one person go through a, a fucking nightmare and the other guy just run, walks straight. There's, like, no there's no obstacles, no nothing. Oh, I got, I'm getting some ideas now for some co-op <laughs> stages. Yeah, it says number of players to be determined on the official website. Mm. I mean, it's we're going to have at least one more direct before June, right? And it depends what time in June because they always be featured at E3. Uh, I don't know if we'll have another direct before June. I think that we will – well, 
I think we could, but not specifically a Nintendo Direct. It would be like a, a Mario Minis. Maker, like a, like a dedicated oh, like either Pokemon, Animal Crossing. I think we're definitely gonna have a Pokemon one. Well, did he announce a Pokemon one, or is that a rumor? Oh, you no, didn't see the follow up. Joe, Joe, oh. Joe fell sorry. for one. I, I, yeah. mind, sorry. Yeah, some so dickhead started retweeting. Too. Some dickhead started retweeting the February 2016 announcement for a Nintendo Pokemon Direct, and everyone was like, "What?" Everyone was like, "What the fuck?" Oh, uh, I saw that. I just saw it was a typo on the marketing team. Yeah, no. I thought, oh. I thought that. Oh, that so that would, someone just literally retweeted the thing, yeah. from, <laughs> and it, it popped up, and, troll. <laughs> and everyone <laughs> fell for it. <laughs> Good on Mark for finding it, though. I was fucking uh, all no, in. No, I saw the 2016 thing that you that yeah. you didn't see or like didn't realize, yeah, and yeah. I just thought, I've, oh, I've Nintendo that, is though. dumb. They didn't. They they fucked their marketing. <laughs> yeah. No, some dickhead. I was like, what year is it? <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Pretty good. Fuck. I wish I would have thought about that. I, I know. Did that. Mm. Uh, yes, yeah, so Super Mario Maker 2, uh, the, so here's what's new. Everything. No, a, a number two. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it, it does insinuate you can play as more than, uh, Mario, right? You can play multiple characters, potentially, hey, good eye, Mark, up to four, but... Or you can just play as different characters. I don't know. Uh, but it's, it's just to be determined. It's I more than one. It's more player. than one. You know. You can also... 99. Use slopes now. Which is cool. Give me a battle royale map. Uh, I haven't like dug, 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 dug through, but I mean they've added a lot. The sun's in there from Mario Three, which is agitating. They've added Super Mario Three D World art assets and uh, the clear pipes? game mechanics. Yeah, clear pipes from there, uh, which you can send items through, which could be interesting. Cat suit, which is a big one. This makes me believe that they will have a big, wide variety of, of palettes. I saw a lot of reaction to this, like, where's Mario 2? And I feel like it, it's in there. Like, it can't not be in there, right? I kind of feel the new Super Mario Brothers taps into the Mario 2 lineage. But it's still not because, Mario 2. Because that's what gave Luigi his floaty jumps. That's it, what gave Peach her hover. It does, but I think yeah. that aesthetic, though. Oh, I mean, that's fine. Like, it's... If we don't... I, yeah, sure, I would love to have it. I, I, th- I thought they were going to go as far as doing 64 I was just going to say, levels. I bet you they will do a 64 style. You think this will just switch to 3D all of a sudden? Oh, that's a lot. No, th- I don't think they can handle that. In, you think in they'll this. add Paper Mario aesthetics? Yeah, I really do. Which is just Super Mario World? I really do. And if flat. not if not in the core game, right? Because yeah. this was a very short teaser. It was a 60-second thing to start off the direct. And it just said more. We'll talk about more. E3 Treehouse. Uh, I think they'll probably show it off there, but I think we'll know everything about this game before then. And honestly, the the comments that have come out about not only the comments that came out in their investors relation stuff over the last like year or since Switch launched, but also what we've seen like in this direct even we saw an expansion of Captain Toad, which yes, right. But like no one expansion of New Leaf, remember that. Like all those things nobody were, asked for that. No, nobody asked for it, but they got <laughs> it and it's cool. And I think that that is part of the business model going forward is establish these big things and keep adding on to it to keep people coming back. The same way that we're going to keep coming back to Smash Brothers every couple months with a new character. Mm-hmm. The same way that I think this could launch with whatever color palettes and then at a certain point go, all right, welcome to the free update. It's been six months. Here's Mario 64 or whatever. You know what I mean? They could very easily pad those things in add in more characters to choose from new enemies to plop in the creation tools that that was kind of cool so there's a radial wheel now because like that, that was the question is what do they do now that they don't have magnificent wii u gamepad which we know matt was upset about not having the stylus but matt fear not fret not looks like there's a radial wheel where you can customize what goes in each wheel so if you have kind of favorites or most used you can assign them to each of those wheels and pull them up with a different combination of buttons. Bowser looked also a lot bigger than before too. Just he took steroids, which it's is called cool. a mushroom. Like, but like when he was in the little the the, the ship and you're on a little air flight in the trailer, like that looked bigger than the Bowser's I remember in the first one. I don't remember it now. It was like right at the very end. I think. Uh, I don't know. Let's see it. But. I want to look at so it's cool. Uh, um, I mean, it could have been a mushroom thing. But. I really, I, it made me want to go back and play Mario Maker One, or just play this when it comes out. I guess I don't know. 
But I'm excited. And then uh, to close out the Nintendo Direct, jump into the end. Uh, the Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening remade and reimagined, really, in this cool 70s Christmas special art style. It's it's another Zelda game that's dividing people because of its visuals. Oh, give it a couple fucking years. They'll... I'm not going to do that because of your dogs. Honestly, I think they were just updating the exact Game Boy aesthetics well, that's, that's cool as shit like the intro was nice sprite art dude and then you know it's all chibi in the game just like how that is it has a yeah. nice toy charm kind of look to everything it has like a nice clean polish that nice out of focus touch with it it's charming it's so i cute. love the way it looks i think it looks really cool no i love it like even even to the hat design it's just it's the same type of pointy little like style it looks good and then that was i texted you at like three in the morning <laughs> but that picture that i sent you was from the nes manual for the legend of zelda and even that had elements of that stuff you did yeah do i remember this no but like, oh that yeah, little yeah, yeah, image yeah. of link like it yeah, yeah that's that's from the first one yeah yeah, yeah it's pretty good because um super nintendo forward like link to the past forward they had this one artist no zelda 2 mm-hmm. forward they had um this artist uh, that like more like realistic looking uh, fantasy type settings and oh, they're so good and yeah. they did it for the yeah, Link's Awakening yeah I, I'm excited about this one yeah I mean I've never really played a top down Zelda game to completion I'd be curious to pick this up try it also the story with this one is story's cool yeah good. you kept like, saying that before yeah. like you said like the whole art style the way the ending would be they did in the same art style would be really cool mm-hmm. I it's just l- neat because this one was rumored for so long and for it to be real yeah. and to be dope looking yeah Dude, Sorry. if they do this with the Oracle games, oh my god! Yeah, I'm just a little disappointed though about the art style and that they didn't use the CDI art style. That's the my only great. Well, we still have the cutscenes. You know what I mean? Like we could get that in. Oh my god, the ending's gonna be animated. <gasps> yeah, that's a joke, by the way. I <laughs> think it's terrible. But what if they could revamp those to make them I good? You know, just what if? Just, just portal. Just, leave. just actually the Unity port- button. Hit yep. Port, actually, switch. if they want to do this whole DLC later thing with their games, yeah. make these Breath of the Wild missions like side quests, the CDI games. Pay like a little nod. Wow. <laughs> that is out in 2019. Oh, that's this year. Yeah, it is. Everything in the tomorrow. Direct- <laughs> yeah. That's true. Everything in the direct is out this year, including. Astral Chain, a new game from Platinum Games. The rest of the direct stuff, we're, I'm going to read the name of the game, and then we'll go, ah, or, or <laughs> however else. No, just, yeah. Uh, so Astral Chain, a new action game from Platinum Games, directed by Takahisha Tara, uh, who was the game designer on Nier, uh, with supervision by Hideki Kamiya. Uh, you play as police special forces unit in a multicultural futuristic city. You work together with a living weapon, the Legion, in a synergetic action system of battle and exploration. Looks cool. Sucks you have to play the cop, but still looks cool. I mean, oh well. <laughs> Get a robot dog. Played as a cop in Resident it, Evil. I, it looks like Resident Evil near in a cyberpunk city. Insert in, in JoJo references. There you go. Here, because people are make, making those comparisons. Uh, yeah, no, it, it looks really cool. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. It's definitely a little like a platinum game before they said platinum. Yeah, we're like, this <laughs> yeah. is platinum. And then, yeah. Uh, that's out August 30th. Was that exclusive to Switch? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's weird. They're getting two. Yeah. Platinum doesn't fuck around. I mean, I mean, they've, they've always been hand in hand since... Well, I mean, Beautiful Joe was initially exclusive. Yeah. Yeah, I, I know, but it's just like, you know, then, you got yeah, two games now yeah. coming. I mean, you had to the, switch. Yeah, what was for GameCube? Like the, the, the Clover 5 or whatever? 5, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, and yeah, Wonderful 101 games. That's exclusive. Where the fuck are they at? There you go. All right. Astral Chain. Fire Emblem Three Houses. The Black Eagles, the Blue Lions, the Golden Deer. These are the three noble houses. Oh, my. That make up the Officers Academy, an elite facility that trains students in the ways of weapons, magic, and special skills. You pick an alliance, you play a Fire Emblem game. What do you guys think? Not what I expected. We got the rest of the uh, season pass for Smash. (laughs) (laughs) Fuck. Um, 
I am not interested. Really? Were you interested before this? Like I was thinking houses, look? like Game of Thrones style like houses, Starks, like Lannisters. actual like kingdoms houses, not fucking Hogwarts school bullshit. <laughs> I'm tired of this like Pokemon Go like thing. I don't. I just I'm not about that. Oh man, do you think it really just boils down to like blue, red, and yellow? That's. It seemed pretty much like that. To be fair, this is when I did leave to go to the bathroom, so yes. I didn't see everything. Hmm. You know what? I could be wrong though. Because they did show kingdoms in the beginning, so maybe it just starts off as a school thing, and then maybe there's like a time gap or something. Something tragedy happens, happens. And then like yes. then it, and, and like then the scale gets bigger. Like maybe the people you were friends with are in different kingdoms. I, don't I know. could see there could be more to this, but it says these students can interact with each other at the academy, strengthening their bonds and supporting each other on the battlefield. So it seems like you're. I feel like they're not giving a you know not going to tell yeah. you a story. Yeah, probably something happens at the school. It yeah. creates a civil war between the three houses. Zing Zidane. There yeah. you go. That's where you're I'm in, game. dude. I'm fully in. The three houses thing was a little like, ah, eh, shit, or whatever. But yeah, I just don't care for school themes and games or anything. Yeah, I'm a grown ass man. I don't have time to go back to school. Even when I was in school. Yeah, no. <laughs> I just kind of want to play a Persona game one time before mm. I die mm. just to see what that is. Shit, I guess I should bite you, my Yeah, tongue. you better get cracking then <laughs> before no. you die. <laughs> I'm just going to bite my tongue on that. Yeah. Final Fantasy VII first. There you go. And then some a school per- a, a persona okay. game. It doesn't have to be golden or five or whatever. How about Fire Emblem Three Houses? No. All right. You know what? I'll try it. There you go. I don't know if I'll see it through, but I'll try it. There you go. It's out on July twenty sixth, which got delayed out of that spring window they were targeting. So second delay, but hopefully still good. Box Boy plus Box Girl. Two hundred and seventy new levels. A new rectangle called Cutie. April 26th. Y'all in? I think I am. I actually showed this to Victoria, like just the art. She was she laughed at how simple and just the Dumbo. So. I feel obligated to play the other ones. Yeah, I do too, and I never finished. Like, I bought all of them, but I never Don't finished them. Don't know, do it. Don't do it. Don't put yourself through that because you'll never, you'll never do it, and then you won't play this one. Uh, Tetris 99 we talked about, but that is out. That is exclusive for Nintendo Switch online members. Um, like but free. It's free, but you need to be a member of that to actually download it. Um, Bloodstained Ritual of the Night we saw a better look at. Uh, and we got a release window of summer this year. Um, it looks better than I thought it would look. Mm-hmm. There's some little nods. I saw the little librarian nod from Symphony of the Night, the inverted castle stuff. It, it seems, you know. That seems like that's just an ability of hers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah she can just. Rotate. Just whenever. Just yeah. fucking flip it around. I mean, that's kind of cool. She, yeah, that is cool. I don't know. We'll see. I, I, Yeah, she bends gravity to her will and darts around the game's elaborate castle at lightning speed. The laws of reality and 2D side scrollers don't apply. Hmm. Yeah. Summer. We'll see. In the meantime, go play Bloodstained Curse of the Moon because that was a good game. Uh, they showed Mortal Kombat April 23rd, which we knew about already. Yoshi's Crafted World. We saw a little more at and obviously um, let us know that the demo's out now. The one thing they showed is that there's all those fucking uh, costumes that Yoshi can wear in the game. Oh, the different like boxes. Yeah. Isn't that like a shield or something? Just like a defense thing? Yeah, something like that. I already forget. Including a Labo one. Some of them may be harder to get than others, they said. Captain Toad Treasure Tracker gets an update with special episode DLC. Uh, If you buy the DLC, you get one episode right now. And you get the rest of it. Or it's one course right now, and you get the rest of it on March 14th. Uh, If you haven't bought the game yet, there's a special bundle to include everything. I think it's only 5 bucks. Because I thought about buying it. And it was forty five bucks for the bundle of the two, and it was forty dollars for Captain Toad by itself. So forty four ninety eight would tell me that's mm-hmm. five bucks. Uh, got a lot of details about Super Smash Brothers Ultimate Update three point By a lot, I mean nothing. <laughs> that I thought was like it was the weirdest. I was like, I'm sure you 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 want to know what we have in store for this. Well, keep waiting. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Was, thanks for telling me. Very strange. I mean, at this point, it's two months away. I don't know. What, what would have been stranger, though? Talking about an update coming or not saying the word Smash at all? This entire Direct. They had to say Smash, but like... Well, then exactly. This is... Yeah. They probably don't know what they're updating yet. Or like they don't want to reveal it. 
You think it'll be something big? That might not be something big, but it'll you know, if it's something. a but if it's a big balance patch, like they still are probably I, working on the balancing. Thing. I feel like it might be a game mode of some kind or something else, like to add. What was two point oh? What did two point oh add? Dick. All right. Well then. But why keep it like this? Like yeah, because it's a big balance change, and they don't know what to fix on the or like they they're, they're still working that out. Hey, they could be adding stuff from past games. Maybe. I, what if what if they do add it in adventure mode? What if there is the home home run thing? Yeah, like I, I can wonder see if, a home run. Okay. That's what I mean. Like something like right. that. I don't mean like this Break whole big targets, crazy. Slam the that's yeah. That's the shit I'm talking about. Yeah. Uh, but Joker. I'm just saying it would have been weirder to not even acknowledge Smash. Yeah, that's fair. Why are you defending Nintendo? Where'd this come from? Because <laughs> I'm a shareholder. Oh god. <laughs> okay. Uh, Joker from Persona 5 will be available as a playable fighter before the end of April. That's cool. They showed a model. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We didn't have the model before. That's right. We yeah. saw the model, but like it was on a black screen with nothing else. It's fine. I'm, all right. I'm being pessimistic. Sorry, guys. Um, and then new Amiibo, Matt. Uh, mm. Snake, Simon, Squirtle, Pokemon oh, God, Trainer, and Ivysaur. That. Fuck. I forgot all about Snake being... Ugh. Oh, God. Yeah. My head hurts again. Get ready for your Christmas gift. Hellblade, Sinuous Sacrifice, coming to Switch. It actually looked decent. Yeah, uh, coming this spring. For a Switch port. Yeah, pretty good. Uh, Damon X Machina, we talked oh, yeah, about already. Oh, yeah, that was the one that looked good. Sorry. Yeah, yeah that one looked very good. Uh, yeah. mm-hmm. Hell- Hellblade looked very good. <laughs> uh, Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3, The Black Order, we saw gameplay of for the first time. Um, coming this summer. Dragon Quest Eleven S Echoes of an Elusive Age Definitive Edition. <laughs> Ready? Dragon Quest XI S Echoes of an Elusive Age Definitive that Edition. That like a square game if I didn't know. <laughs> but no, any Kingdom Hearts 358 over two days. Mm. 2.8 chapter prologue. What? It's coming to Switch. Cool. I might this play fall. that whole game 16-bit and yeah. not have any three. Because <laughs> you can. Uh, this game is... It is the complete edition of Dragon Quest XI because what Mark's referring to, the 16-bit thing, you could switch between... 16-bit and the newer style in 3DS, but not on PS4. Right. No, because 3DS's version, I think, was only... 16-bit? Yeah. I thought it was like a dumb... I don't know. Either way, you can do all of that. Or maybe it was. I can't remember. Either way, this is everything. Fully fully orchestrated, Japanese voices, Japanese everything. uh, Everything's Japanese. That's Dragon (laughs) Quest. That's cool. Yeah, because the complaint before with the music, it was all MIDI. On 3D? Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. Even yeah. on, like, the console. Oh, on PS4. Oh, and they were weird. like, what the fuck? And so now it's all got fu- it. fully orchestrated, so they fixed it. Got it, got it, got it. Nobody thought they were going to do that. And then Dragon Quest Builders 2 coming on July 12th for Nintendo Switch. Uh, more Dragon Quest Builders 2. Uh, did you notice that they spent almost as much time on Dragon Quest content as they did on... Smash character. Fire Emblem? Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. That's what we kind of know, but <laughs> yeah. I'm also... <laughs> yeah. So let's see. Uh, Oninaki? Yep. What was that? That was from the guys at Square who did... Um, oh, this is the new JRPG. I am Setsuna. Got it, got it, got it, got it. Yeah, I... Yeah. I, I, I like the concept for, like depending on who you save actually matters and you can use them as weapons. That's kind of cool. Yeah. But, uh, new star Fox missions for Starlink battle for Atlas. Great. Uh, spring update, uh, in April. Let's you play as peppy Falco and slippy to help take down Andrew Pigma and Leon in a series of challenging missions. Game's 20 bucks right now. If only four of you could play together. Starlink two battle for Atlas two. Or just do a Star Fox game where it's actually co-op for once. Oh, yeah. Do a Star Fox game where it's actually co-op for once. <laughs> Dude, oh, man. Remember when we were at uh, Target and we were looking at the clearance section and Matt was really excited that Star Fox Zero was there? I went back to go buy it and it was all gone. So I think the price got low enough because it was – I think it was still like 30 bucks, which was – like if it was 20 I was going there. I was there. And I figured it would keep getting lower and lower. I think it got low enough and I missed the fucking boat. It was zero dollars. Oh, shit. 
Uh, probably the most exciting announcement of this week above Mario Maker and Link's Awakening. Disney Tsum Tsum Festival. Oh, fuck you. The follow-up we all wanted to King Hearts. Launches Look. exclusively for Nintendo Switch in 2019. Look out, Tetris. Uh, Rune Factory 4 Special and Rune Factory 5 coming to Switch. 4 is uh, later this year, and 5 was just announced. Uh, Delta Rune, the first chapter in the next thing of Undertale, available for free beginning February 28th. Final Fantasy 7, March 26th. Final Fantasy 9, available now. Chocobo's Mystery Dungeon, everybody, March 20th. Is that all the Final Fantasy stuff? And then we already knew about all those other Final Fantasy games, like 12 yeah. and whatever, yeah. 9 is the iOS version. Oh. Cool. We it, did point out that 7 was not. You can tell by the text, right? I think so. Okay. I think, I, I'm not certain at this point now because of, yeah. of 9. I get but that. Because when you're putting in a character name, it says uh, no emoticons. Mm. PlayStation had no reason to have yeah. that. I wouldn't even mind the Steam version. Which is the same yeah. thing. Is it the same thing as iOS? Mm-hmm. Uh, then these next two. Dead by Daylight Ooh. coming to Switch. Which is exciting, but it looked a little rough. They got some time. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I can say. That... Hmm. The one with less time that looked even more rough, though, Assassin's Creed 3 Remastered, is coming May 21st for Switch. Includes uh, all the game's original DLC as well as Assassin's Creed Liberation Remastered. When does that come out? May 21st. They didn't want to do July? Uh, uh, yeah, that's a good point. They'll market it at July because it'll be on sale by that point. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Buy it for $20 it. for the 4th of July. It, yeah, uh, the game looks rough. It's cool. There's an Assassin's Creed game on Switch, but not that. I one. mean, it's like that game looked better on Wii U. All I know is or Black Flag. Did. It's tough to yeah. have a game look good when you have so many button or so many actions mapped to one button, and then the console trying to decide which <sighs> one you mean. Sounds like you're uh, buying it day one. Mm. Oh yeah, of course you are because there's new motion aiming and touch input. <laughs> That's got Matt written all over it. You need motion aiming to stab somebody? I guess so. Uh, you know what, though? Isn't there a bow? After playing yeah. Damon X Machina, I need motion aiming and everything. Not for not for straight up motions. Wait, did you use motion aiming? In no, I wanted it really badly. Oh, right. I wanted to be able to subtly turn. Oh. Like Breath of the Wild style. You I didn't I mean? mention for Damon. Yeah. Uh, you can customize that whole HUD. Oh, The sizes of the bars and where you want them and what you want showing. Dope. You can move it all. That's pretty slick. Yeah. Yeah, Kane's got some stuff. Uh, then Unravel 2 is out on March 22nd. That's uh, Yarny and Friends. And then Grid Autosport coming this summer with a bunch of cars. Okay. All DLC included in this game with 100 cars, 100 circuits, tilt controls, and custom controls. I'm using tilt controls. It's weird to see like a you can realistic use the car game on Switch in this day yeah. and age when... You know, some pictures from Forza, I'm convinced, is real. I know. And then you look at this, and you're like, oh, man, I remember what Gran Turismo 4 looked like on PS3. It's cool, though. Like yeah, you can use the Labo wheel. Oh, can you? I'm Probably. Sure you can. Oh, that's cool. If there's toll controls, yeah. I'm sure you can do it. There you have it. I think that there were some cool surprises in here. I think it's cool that everything on this list is coming out this year. Okay, we're two months in. No mention of F-Zero yet. I'm doing good. So far, so good. What else is... Uh, I just want to ask you guys, what was missing out of this Direct? What were you not hoping for, but maybe... Kind of hoping for? Like, there's... Obviously, I think the first reaction, everybody was like, what the fuck? No Animal Crossing? Which, now that seems more indicative that's going to be their big uh, E3 Luigi's jam. Mansion. Right. Yeah, no Luigi's Mansion. What's going on with that, you know? I mean, it's, I'm sure it's all still coming, and I like... I really like this new era of Nintendo's marketing where it's like, we're going to show you shit, one, when it's ready, and two, when it's going to come out in like a week. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure Luigi's Mansion's coming along fine. I'm sure we'll see a lot of it, and I'm sure it'll be great. I was okay with this direct because they finally stopped showing 3DS shit. God, yeah. That was missing, and it was so good. I mean, I'm sorry to the people who still want 3DS games, but like, I'm I'm done. Yeah, I'm okay. I'm ready to move on. What? I would. You won't. I'm not totally mad. Like, I, I don't know. I, I wouldn't mind seeing a game or two pop up. 
on 3DS? Like, I don't need a whole goddamn segment for 15 minutes. It would just like, be another yokai watch. <laughs> yeah. But that's fine. But, like, you know, just say the direct. And instead of just saying everything for Switch, just go into it. And then, like, in the middle of it. I'm not saying start off or end with a 3DS game. But, you know, in the middle of it, saying seeing um, Disney, Ami Ami, whatever the fuck that was. <laughs> see me, see me. Give, see I don't see know. Me. Give me, like, another Metroid. Put it on Switch at this point, though. Eh, it's fine. Or put it on both. You want to put it on on 3ds? That's fine. But or maybe not that. I don't know. They're, like, I'm sure there's still a franchise or two they can put on 3ds again. Yeah, I'm sure they could, but I don't know. Like, I think after... they can still do it without doing it in a direct. That's fine. I but, like. I you don't need to do the segment again. Like you know, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Where that was like the 3ds segment. All right, now we're moving how's on the that? switch. Let's uh go over to the 3ds. Yeah, headlines. that I'm done with. But you can still pepper a game or two. <laughs> in Let there. me my neck. <laughs> The Luigi's Mansion should be on Switch. Like that one they put that. out on 3DS. It was like, oh, just put it on fucking both. I don't want to play it on. It doesn't look good on 3DS. I know. It was why it should be on Switch. Yeah, it would yeah, run. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm just saying. We don't need to kill the 3DS, but you know, we don't need the segment. Yeah, I, I agree with that. It's eight eight years old. <laughs> and it, their projection for the year, there are no announced games for that. All right, that's fine. I'm just saying, in virtual consoles on that, so you know, I, don't I, kill it completely. I did. I mean, I did play it the other day. What'd you play on it? Just some pocket card jockey. Right. I was about to pick it up the other day to um to play WarioWare again. Mm. Mm. That's true. Did we ever do our top 3DS games for the site? I know we did Vita and Game. Did we do Vita? Maybe. I didn't um, do Vita. And we did Vita a couple years ago. You did do Vita though. I yeah. do remember that. I know we did. GameCube and N64. Yeah. I don't think we did 3DS. Maybe it's time. Maybe. Or Game Boy Advance. I'm looking at a contender right there. You all need to play. <laughs> I'm not talking about theater rhythm either. Corey in the house for Smash. Oh, I'm in. After Shaggy. Someone photoshopped that the other day. So. It's a damn shame that all those spots would be taken up by Fire Emblem people. Well... Well, there's uh, your news. There's your Nintendo Direct. Uh, we're going to jump over to a topic of the week. Oh, wait. It's not time to get out of the car yet? No. Stay in the car. Oh, shit. Stay You're make someone late for work? Put it in school. Put, but we're saving their life. Put it in park. Send an email that says, not fucking coming in today. Let them know you got a topic to listen to. Mark, you've prepared... Many a topic for us here. Mm -hmm. It's up to Matt and I to choose a number, if I'm not mistaken. I'm going to make you both pick a number, and then that's going to determine something. All right. So a number between one through seven from both of you. Five. (laughs) I was going to say three. (laughs) Three? Which was supposed to be six and three, but I think six was my gut, so let's go with six. I like the selection process a yeah. lot already. I don't even know how it works. It's I think really he's taking easy. our numbers. I and just put them, them together. together. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, okay, this one isn't really that funny, I guess. Oh. Um, you know what? I'll ask it, and then we vote if we want to do it. All right. Uh, what kind of Pokemon trainer would you be? Oh, fuck. <sighs> and who would be your partner? Ooh. What do you mean what kind? What does that mean? So they have like actual like trainers for fighting. They have breeders. They have gym leaders. You could be Team Rocket yeah. or Got it. some type of villain. Or maybe you're just a, a, a mountain man, a hiker. You know what I mean? Like just. Got it. So a the fisherman. The way I play those games is always get the coolest looking team ever. And by coolest, I mean like I want the ghosts and ghouls. Right. So I would just have like a fucking Gengar hanging out with me and I would probably You remember in Pokemon X and Y when you would go to that weird like burned down building mm-hmm. where you could find pumpkaboos and hang out? I think I'd probably just hang out there. So you would still be like drinking in the woods and stuff and yeah. you just you would just be that kind of person. I would revert back to my teenage years. You would just be spooking people. Oh, I didn't even consider that. That'd be cool. Get a lot of spooky Pokemon. I'm saying, like, just like you in the Pokemon world, like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. What kind of trend do you think you would be? (laughs) I would just have cool ghost Pokemon, and I would hang out in the woods. 
I think so. You know, just just you and a Gengar. Yeah, maybe a Pumpkaboo, maybe a Trevenant. I mean, you could probably have all those, but like, you know, I might like, have a Trevenant house actually. You like, know? if you had, you had the one that was like out of its ball that would follow you around, that'd be a Gengar. Okay. Yeah, for sure. Or maybe a Haunter. I don't know. Hmm. Gengar could be fun. I feel like you could ride in a Gengar. I know that sounds weird. Right. But I feel like you could wear him like a mech suit, <laughs> and I feel like I'd try it if he'd let me. Really tap into that Green Lantern, huh? You know. <laughs> Ghost Lantern. Chandler. But yeah, I wouldn't. <laughs> oh, shit. But yeah, I wouldn't be a, I wouldn't be a, like a, a fucking, I wouldn't do the you gym leader yeah, thing. Right. I wouldn't, yeah. I would just want to hang out. I'd be I one of the ones where when someone got lost, I'd be like, oh, shit, time to fight. What about you? So I wouldn't, I wouldn't try, you know, to be the very best that no one ever was or yeah. anything like that. I think I would just, you know, I would be in a gym, but I wouldn't be the gym leader. I would be like that first fucker you have to go through mm. because – Make them waste their items. Yeah, well, <laughs> not even that. I don't plan to be good. As, you know, I'm just there kind of hanging out because mm. I just want a steady job to support, you know, the wife, potential kids, and the Pokemon. Right. Um, but, like, those, those, yeah. those gyms are grand, you know? Yeah, there you go. So I would want to work at Ceruleans. Okay. Squirtle, of course, with the sunglasses would be my Pokemon. Yeah, but I feel like someone needs to be in charge of the maintenance and stuff there. So you want to sign up to be a? uh, Well, I would be the first person. I would be a walkover. But you know, my regular day to day, you want to be upkeep on the fountains. Yeah. All right. I feel like someone needs to do that, right? It would probably pay well. Pokemon could do that. Hmm. You could probably trick a Pokemon. Someone's gonna manage a Pokemon. That's what I'm saying. They're gonna fucking dick off. You know, you gotta put. That's true. So what was that fucker out in the so desert? Your dream what, is we were to making beat fun of for the Pokemon longest time for not working. Is that what you just? Huh? What is it? Bj? Oh no! What the? What's that guy's name? That that we were Sandshrew. Who's that guy's name? Oh, oh, <laughs> Sandshrew. Sandshrew. <laughs> what's that guy's name? I can't remember. Uh, Blaine? No, no, no. I don't no. know. But you know, just I'll find it. You know, maybe I'll just uh, manage the Pokemon like that. Really drill them hard until they break, and then kick them out. But except my squirrel, he just fucks off and does whatever he wants. He just hangs out. AJ. 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 That was close. I've let her, let her off. Yeah. That fucker. Sand true. <laughs> Sand true. I might have a look like that, though. You want to look like that? You want to put your... It's like a combination of Guy Fieri. And... <laughs> it's a Guy Fieri shirt. Yeah. Man. Oh, man. Huh. Yeah, you know. Yeah. I've tried being the very best at various video games. It's tough. That's it a lot of tough. stress. It's a lot of work. I don't need that stress in my life. I just want to hang out, relax. Yeah, I should bring out in the woods. Place of water. I like the water, and I imagine it would be nice and warm. Mm. I'm assuming it's warm because my squirrels wear sunglasses. <laughs> I want to go somewhere just foggy and shitty and hang out with ghosts. Seattle. You can nah, go to Seattle. Like the, the woods of Seattle. Is there a wood? Still Seattle. Is there a wooded area of Seattle? Almost all of Washington, I feel like, is in woods. All right, I'm down. I'm. Ah, oh, man. Let's move to Washington. No. All right, let me call Katie. Mark, what kind of Pokemon trainer would you be? Hmm. I went. I went through a couple ideas as you two were talking. AJ. And like, yeah. I don't know. Like, my first thought for a certain reason was like a type of messenger. Yeah. Just like riding like an Arcanine or something. But then I was like, no, let's make it more exciting. I think I'd be a skydiver. I think I'd have like a Noivern or something. Okay. And just like just fucking just fly around everywhere and just do different tricks in the air and then maybe have like a like a like a sky fight. Just oh, have a, just yeah. have like a, just have like an airboard, and while like. While like Noivern's fighting or something, airboard like a snowboard that you wear in the sky. Yeah, you know, like 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 Power Rangers movie. When yeah, Tommy's exactly. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, I'm down. I just had this image of Would Tommy Wise like out fly, flying in. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what I dress. All right, I'm come sorry. on. Sorry, come didn't mean to. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Uh, let us know what type of Pokemon trainer you would be. Where would you go? Where would you hide? Maybe not hide. I guess I'm the only one hiding. <laughs> or, or could I have an Arcanine that just, uh, I, I would uh, put its shit in bags on people's doorsteps and have them light it on fire and That's mock, a, mock speed out of there. It's a lot of shit. I feel like that would be like a human sized. Um, yeah. Be careful. I, I, for you, um, just be careful because you might have Dexter out in those woods. So just That's all right. I got ghosts hanging out with yeah. me. He's probably making all the ghost Pokemon, you know? Uh, there it is. Episode 287. Another one in the books. Uh, there will be stuff on the website this week. TBD. Uh, we ended up, uh, last week we said we were going to do Dragon Mark for Death, and we 
did not. We ain't wings. We did have wings. Um, the dragon died. <laughs> yeah. Forget what else. There's something. Ah, uh, whatever. There's there's stuff on the website. Uh, if you missed out free cheese wrestling, I think it's really good. Uh, Matt put together a really dope show. Additionally, uh, it gave us the opportunity to treat it like a TV show. So there's commercials in there for stuff. I'll leave it at that. I'm going to make you go watch a thing to find the commercials uh, for uh, secrets coming up on the free cheese.com. You can follow us on Twitter. The free cheese is at some free cheese. Mark is at all underscore mental. Matt is at Matty Ace one, three, one. And I'm at the free cheese. You guys got anything big for the week? No. Game wise, plan wise. I don't think so. Hmm. Auto chess. We'll yeah, we'll see. If this is the week I fall off Destiny. I don't think it will be, but we'll see. Shit, I keep. Maybe I'll finish that Yoshi demo and. Yeah. We'll see whether or not I renew my online subscription. The deadline for that, I believe, is Friday. Do you think you will? Honestly, there's a chance I might buy it, like on a monthly like but basis, maybe. Like you like, waste I, so much money. No, 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 no. I'm saying like I buy it for a month, month and, and then yeah. fall off when I don't want to play it anymore. So that way I'm not wasting all that money. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Cause I'm thinking like this. Like if I all I have to do is pay four bucks a month to play Tetris 99. Yeah. But if you, I don't know. But if I fall off, that is don't. Really that, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or if I want to come back into the Splatoon for a month. You just got to think about that. The, you got, once you hit month two. That's where it gets, because now you spent eight bucks. It's almost half of what you could have just spent to have the whole year. Plus, you're missing out any. on that sweet, sweet opportunity to order the NES controller. Joy That's right. Yeah, I don't want that. I didn't think I did either, and then playing those NES games this week. I I'm not going to play those NES games. Oh, I know you won't, but I, yeah, I thought it was cool. I'll just get them on the virtual console on my 3DS. I want to say this. 2DS, sorry. I'm very impressed with those NES controllers. Not the build, because I obviously haven't received them yet. I was say, you haven't even touched them yet. No. I'm impressed with the fact that I could still order them. It's been months since the pre-orders went up. It's been months since the shipping started. The fact that you can still go in and buy them, I did not think that was going to be the case. I thought it was going to be one of those things that sold out, and they would say, oh, sorry, we're looking at... I never thought that. I just didn't think... I, I hoped that it wouldn't be the case, but I assumed I just never that... saw a lot of buzz about it. I just think people really cared. I figured it would be one of those things that people would start buying and flipping on eBay, and it'd be a whole... Because I'm just so used to a meat... If they could treat Amiibo like this. Like, I still want some of the... You know what I mean? There's a couple I missed out on. Or don't we don't need to treat Amiibo like this. You can just go away with it. I'm going to buy you that snake one. I don't want... No, that's... Oh, my God. It's not a matter of what you so want. Many levels. It's not a matter of what you want. It's not even just triggering me because of the Amiibo. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of bad history right now with Metal Gear Solid and me. And Konami... Not you're necessarily Hideo Kojima, but there's some history involving all that that would trigger me. You're saying your cousin started something great here. Mm. Let me know if you want to play Splatoon. Uh, we'll be back next week with more podcast, more stuff. Go to thefreecheese.com to stay up to date on everything. That's it, right? I think so. All right. I don't know why I feel like I'm forgetting something. Oh, because we have shit to do after this. Uh, we got shit to do after this. We'll see you next week. <laughs> Uh, thanks, Mark. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, listener, for listening. We got shit to do after this.